stop three of the Super League Triathlon Championship Series. And look at this, we are in Jersey in the beautiful waterfront at St. Helier. The competitors are all ready. The fans are lined up on the streets and all we need is you guys. So welcome to Jersey. For many of today's athletes, this is the place where they enjoy racing Super League the absolute most. We've got 40 men and women who are going to be competing in three consecutive triathlons while the rest of us just look on amazed. And with me is someone who's won the World Duathlon Championship and can talk to us in multiple different languages, Annie Emerson. Good to have you with us this morning. So lots of these athletes then will have raced here many times before. Do you think that's going to be an advantage today? I think it's a huge advantage to come to a race, to know what lies ahead, to know the course, to understand your environment. So yeah, for some of the athletes, many of them have actually been here. This is the fourth time they'll be racing here in Jersey. So yes, it is a huge advantage. And of course, these crowds here are absolutely brilliant. We love coming to Jersey for Super League Triathlon. Who would you say are the athletes who've competed here best before, if you were to pick some out? Do you know what? We can't really look beyond Vincent Louis. <laughs> He's won twice here before. Cassandra Bergrand, the French athlete who hasn't performed so well this season, but has won previously here in Jersey. And Katie Safir is an American athlete, bronze medalist from Tokyo here racing for the fourth time and possibly going for her third win. But she's going to have tough competition from Jess Learmonth. All right, let's take a moment now, Annie, to get out there and have a little look at the course with an Olympian. So I'm Richard Murray. We're here in Jersey Island for Super League Triathlon, and this is the course preview. So this is the first big, unique challenge of the race, running up this ramp. Off they come out to swim. They'll head down here on the second leg as well. From the first side, they'll head straight into transition from this piece. So the athletes run through here to their bicycles, grab the helmet, pull the helmet on as fast as they can, clip their helmet up. Remember that the sunglasses always go over the helmet straps, not under. And athletes run through here on the mount line, so where they decide whether they want to jump on early or run round the section, pull their bike around, jump on as soon as they can, try and get straight on into their shoes, which I'm not doing now. Uh, and <laughs> there we go, they head onto the bike section. Okay, so yeah, the athletes come through this roundabout really, really tight. They want to stay wide here, cut in on the inside, head towards the outside on the exit. So this is the fastest section of the course coming through here, back towards the transition area. And the last thing is to have a great dismount and you head straight on to the run. slightly sunnier when we shot that as you can see but it's still looking well out here today the athletes getting ready getting lined up and with me now is Tim Don four-time world champion and of course more importantly today team manager of the Eagles now in the first two events of the Super League championship series we've had some pretty little dodgy little corners that we've enjoyed seeing the athletes take on we've had the cobbles in London and Munich there was that slippery bit down to the swim what do you think is going to be the crunch point here today I think the crunch point it's going to be the run from the swim to the bike and then the first 500 meters because you go slightly uphill on the bike into some really aggressive corners that we saw Richard go around. So yeah, it's going to be make or break early on for the women. So enjoyable for us to watch, maybe not so much for the athletes. Can you see, can you see crashes? Um, you know, if the weather gods keep playing ball with us, I hopefully we don't see any crashes, but it's just, you know, if you take the corner at a wrong angle, you're going to lose a meter and have to work harder. That's going to wear down with this format. So you really need to be at the front of the group and attack in every corner as if it's, you know, you, you just got to keep pushing. All right, now let's take a quick look. We mentioned, of course, that your cheaters are doing extremely well. I'm uh, sorry, your cheaters are doing less well, Which Annie. They were. The Eagles are doing extremely well with Tim. And we're having a quick look at the lineup here, Annie. What are you expecting tactically from these guys? It's a great format. It's one that I really love. It's different. It's going to be tougher. It's going to suit some athletes more than others. That's for sure. I think it's hard to look beyond, I don't want to say it, Tim. It's going to be hard to look beyond Jess Learmonth. Um, but all in all, this is a great race. I love this format. It's tough. No stopping. All right, let's take a moment to have a little look at the women we think will deliver a big performance here in Jersey, starting with Team GB's Beth Potter. Beth Potter was the biggest improver in Munich as she grabbed her first podium and the top spot in the run jersey competition. But it was her speed across all three disciplines that counted in Germany, proving she's more than just an outstanding runner. 
Getting beaten up on the swim in London meant that Katie Zafir has had her work cut out to reach the podium. Fourth place was a decent return, but even with a stronger swim in Munich, she couldn't overturn the dominance of the British women. The results will tell you that the women's field has been dominated by Jess Learmonth, but it was Georgia Taylor-Brown who set the pace in London before her unlucky crash. She said on social media that she just wasn't feeling it in Munich, but she still managed to take the silver with the fastest second run split. Has she brought her game face to Jersey? Can anyone take the fight to Jess Learmonth? As the strongest swimmer, she's able to dominate the race from the start of every stage, and the enduro will play right to her strengths. She's the championship leader, but she's taking it all in her stride. Oh, my Lord, I can't believe it. Get a drink, I'm parched. Really thirsty. Um, right, beverage, anybody? We will have some beverages lined up at the end here, but this is what the lineup looks like for the leaderboard with the team, the Eagles, lining up right up at the top there. A massive gap between them and the rest of the field all the way down to the right. It's a bit tighter between Annie's Cheetahs and the Rhinos, and something uh, that, that both of those guys are going to be thinking tactically. And Tim, of course, you've been leading the Eagles so brilliantly. What are your, what are your tactical thoughts today? Can you share just a little one that you might have been dealing with with the team? Yeah, I, th I think it's all a swim. We've got some great swimmers, um, so we need to get out fast. We've got a really good pontoon draw this time. We're on the outside, so we can take a wide arc. We want to stay away from the scorpions, so they can't get on our feet. So that's the, the tactics early on. All right, thanks for sharing that one with us. And in terms of these women, then, the British women have been doing so well so far in Super League uh, Triathlon Championship Series. Here they are lining up. Do you think it's been an advantage, the, the destinations that we've been taking on for the British women? I think so, and I think the, the, the unique thing about the top British women at the moment is they're genuine friends. They're, lots of them live and train in the Leeds High Performance Centre, and they're on this you know, whirlwind tour of the Super League um, series, and they're really enjoying it and using each other you know, when it's getting tough. All right, can we have a quick word on Katie Zafirez? Because she's obviously a strong biker. Is that going to benefit her today? Absolutely. Katie's coming into form. She had a tough swim in the first round. Um, the last round, she was a little bit better. I think this one, we're going to see hopefully Katie to her full strength. Um, you know, if she can race like she did in Tokyo, then she's going to be a force to be reckoned with on this course. Hard, though, to see much past Jess Limith. We'll be coming on to her shortly. But now, let's get down to Annie, who's on the pontoon with some of our competitors. Well, the athletes, as we can see, are just heading down now. It is quite a long walk from the transition area. This is a fantastic swim. It's a swim with a difference. Not only do the athletes have to make their way to the Super League boy, they also have to make their way around all these beautiful yachts and boats. And, and of course, there is that ferocious, long, steep climb up to transition. I'm going to head over here and see if I can get a little word from one of the athletes here, Simone Ackerman from South Africa. How important is the position on the pontoon, Simone? Um, I think very important, especially with um, being next to the Eagles today. We're quite lucky because all the strong swimmers are on that side, so hopefully we can use them. No wetsuit. How does that affect some of the athletes? Because it does, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it can, but I think well, all of us have just kind of agreed to get on with it and yeah, just race with what the conditions are. You can only deal with what you've got, can't you? Exactly. Well, our race is about to start, so we are now going to hand over to our commentary team. Thanks very much, Annie. Well, we broke new ground in London and we did the same in Munich and that ground was, well, it was rough, it was fast, it was full of cobblestones and now we head home to Jersey for the fourth time. A course as familiar as it is technical. 2019, well, it was French territory. Wins for Vincent Lewis and wins for Cassandra Beaugrand. Will it be the Brits who hit back in 2021? Let's take a look at the format. It is the Enduro, considered the most brutal of all the SLT formats. And you know what, that's saying something. No shuffling of orders this time, no time trials, just three triathlons in a row. That's easy as you like. 300 metres on the swim, 4K bike, and a 1.6 kilometre run. It's not the eliminator, but it should be. The 90 second rule is in effect. It will affect plenty in this one. 90 seconds back through any lap and you are gone. Two short shoots available. First across the mountain line after the opening swim and the bike gives you a shortcut to use on either lap of the final run. 15 championship points on the line for the winner.
All right, here we go. It is time. Swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, and swim, bike, run. That is all it is. And we are back in Jersey once again. Not quite as sunny as it was yesterday, but regardless, it is going to be a beautiful swim. And the first of that swim, boy, is absolutely key. Don't forget a short shoot and Jersey points on offer for the first across the mountain line after that swim. And we are underway. Pretty even start across the swim, and it does get a little bit congested. It's better to be on the outside sometimes or on the inside. And Rich, it's going to be a, a really important first couple of hundred metres. Yeah, no, definitely. You can see on the left-hand side that the Team Eagles are definitely putting in the putting in the hard search. And there's four athletes here coming, four or five athletes coming here to the front. Almost looks like it comes from each team. And uh, I think yeah, it must be the right in the middle here, yeah, the Eagles. You can definitely see once from the outside, probably just them, I, I think. Uh, and then probably Victoria Lopez uh, here on the on the, on the other side, uh, heading through to the boy. Yeah, and uh, so I think they've, they've jumped. This is the first section here. They've come through to the boy. It's 20 degrees water Celsius today. And yeah, it's definitely, this is the, the crunch time. This point here, a lot of congestion going up on the right-hand side. And yeah, I think it's just Liam up here, right in the front, setting, setting in, setting in the, setting in the pace here. And yeah, they're, they definitely look like they're uh, they're going for it here at the start the start section of the swim. So I think yeah. So Jess Learmont, there she is in the lead. Thanks, Rich. Uh, we just have some technical issue, issues at this end, but Jess was 15 seconds faster on the swim in both the swims uh, back in Munich. Uh, Victoria Lopez a second, and those two actually are fighting it out for the swim jersey, both on nine points, and this one is going to be absolutely key. Annie Emerson joins us now in commentary as well. And Annie, we talked about that swim. Did the, the girls must have seemed nervous down there early on. Well, they certainly do because they, they know how short this swim is, how important it is to stay close. There are no breaks. It is the enduro, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run. You have to be in contention after this first swim. Otherwise, it really is game over. Yeah, so I think um, you can see the two eagles up in, your, in the front, Jess Learmouth and uh, Victoria Lopez, setting the pace really early here. I think they're about uh, halfway through, just more than halfway through on the swim. You can see it's stretching out here a lot from these first two boys, and there's quite a lot of congestion at the back. They're heading through to this last boy, very sharp left-hand turn, and now they're heading uh, back towards the pontoon where they're going to exit and climb right up uh, the ramp where they head on back to transition. Yeah, and of course, Rich, the crucial point here is to get that short shoot. The short shoot after the swim is gained once the athletes have made their way up that climb onto their bikes and hit the first mount line. And we've seen in so many races just how important it is potentially for an overall victory to win the short shoot. No, definitely. I think, you know, Vittorio Lopez here is definitely going to want to try and get another short shoot. Unfortunately, she got the 90-second rule. She got eliminated in the first round in, in London, where she actually picked up both of those short shoots, if I'm not mistaken. So she really want to try and make sure that she takes it away from, from, from Jess here. And that's what I love about Super League. So unpredictable and tactical, because you said Lopez won those short shoots. She couldn't take them, but nor could anyone else. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the exact thing. You really want to, you know, they want to put the race to, to, to Jesse. You can see she's even almost putting in a tiny bit of a gap here, small bit of a gap opening up that just shows how strong she is during this during the swim segment. And I think from anything going from last weekend, from the two swim bike run uh, events, this one's going to be very hard. So they definitely want to try and take the short shoot from her in, in the next couple hundred meters here. Okay, Liam Month out of the water first, and it's two Eagles up the front too in Lopez, and those two both on nine uh, swim points, and the first one across the mount line will pick up the full five and become our swim leader going into Malibu in the final round. The important part though, and you guys have both mentioned it, is the short shoot, which of course is a shortcut to be taken on the final run. Jess Liam Month had one uh, back in Munich. She looks like she could have one again unless Victoria Lopez, Georgia Taylor-Brown, Maya Kingma uh, behind her can pick up a really, really quick transition. It's Lopez who gets to her bike first, but Learmonth is so, so clinical in transition. And there you go. She's out first, and she picks up the short shoot, and that is a huge thing to have in the back pocket. There is another one on offer at the end of the bike, but given her bike prowess, she could take both. 
Yeah, definitely. It looks like uh, it looks like the race. The race is definitely set out to be a tough one here for everyone else. And you know, uh, Jesse has got a little bit of a tiny bit of a gap already. They definitely want to make sure that they get up on her wheel as soon as they can. Uh, and this is what Jess Learmont has nailed time and time again. Uh, and now in Super League, this is only her third time racing Super League outdoors. She did, of course, uh, race uh, Arena Games earlier on in the year. But Jess Learmont, she just nails this early part of the bike. We can see there her looking over her shoulders to say, where is everyone? She's already out on her home. We can see Georgia Taylor-Brown. Georgia Taylor-Brown is not going to want to let her get away. I think she's got Victoria Lopez on her wheel. But at the moment, Jess Learmont is out in front. It actually, it actually yeah. would be interesting to see whether Jess actually is looking back here. It almost looks like she's almost waiting for them for a degree because I think she knows that she's got the short shoot already uh, and she just wants to probably make sure that she comes up with them and gets somebody to work with here for the, for the rest of the bike. Well, it is a very, very long three triathlons. You don't be burning too many matches at the start, although that's exactly what she did uh, in Munich uh, off the back of that bike TT and no one could catch her. But there's Georgia Taylor Bound bridging the gap. Victoria Lopez, Vicky Holland, Mark King will be a top five ahead of Sophie Colwell. Alaria Zane had a very good swim. Cassandra Bogran uh, in eighth position, which is as, as lofty as she's been across the course of the month so far. She's one of the best swimmers or rated one of the best swimmers. Hasn't been on form in recent times. Taylor Spivey and Beth Potter were the top ten coming out of the water and you can see yeah a couple more looks behind and these two have worked together in so many races in the past Georgia Taylor Brown and Jess Learmont and there's Victoria Lopez in a lonely third position you would expect Georgia to catch up to Jess but of course what Jess needs to do now is make sure that no one else takes the other short shoot which comes across the mountain line as they go onto the run so her job will be to allow Georgia to do some of the work and make sure she crosses the mountain line first and doesn't have that effort negated she would know she's a very tactical racer in that respect. But the two Brits at the front, as it has been uh, over the past couple of weeks, and listening to the incredibly smug words of Annie Emerson on the Short Shoot Show podcast, I really don't want another Brit one too, to be, to be perfectly honest. Any other nationality would do, but Annie, you're absolutely loving what the Brits have been putting down. And Gee, they're a strong group, especially in the females. Well, sorry, Will, I'm not going to apologise. The, the British <laughs> are on fire, it has to be said. As we can see, they're now going through our pictures. Sophie Colwell uh, and Maya Kingma, they've got to work really hard. I tell you what, Rich, I don't know about you, but the place in this race where you've got to give it absolutely everything, bin yourself, it is the early part of this bike. Because if you're not on, you're not going to get back on when Jess is out in front. No, I mean, this, you know, this format being swim bike run three times through, it's that much more important to be here now on the first leg and you can see these small gaps I mean there's almost a 25 second deficit of the thing between the first and the last person here this is you know the 90 second rule is probably going to come into play here uh, you can see non Stanford uh, I think probably behind this Cassandra Bagran she had a good, good swim there it's one of her best positions so far I think and uh, yeah Beth Potter coming in here as well it looks like this is stringing out much quicker than you would expect it actually no sighting yet of Katie Safiris, which is uh, a bit of a surprise. This is a format she's lo she loves and has won before here in Jersey. Yeah, it is interesting. I think Katie was kind of with the Rachel Farmer and the likes of um, Cassandra Bergeron kind of there. They were like 15, 20 seconds on back. Uh, but yeah, I think it's uh, the two Brits up in the front here again. And, and this, this, this reminds me of uh, last weekend's Munich event. Uh, this section of the course here is one of the quickest parts here to come down, take a sharp right onto these bricks. Uh, and it really does, you're going to be careful here with the, uh, with the legs of these barriers not to go into one of them. Yeah, we've seen that happen plenty of times before. If you want to go and see the most brutal one, just Google Laura Linderman SLT 2017. Uh, you, you don't want to watch it if you're squeamish. I'll tell you what happened to her twice. Gillian Sanders, a bit of a problem for her. She's already a minute 25 back, so she's going to be the first, it looks like, to be showing the... Um, to be shown the yellow flag of elimination. She must have had an issue there because she's nearly a minute back on the rest of the field. Emily Morier, the second uh, last place competitor, 33 seconds adrift. And now it's Vicky Holland having a turn on the front uh, for that group. Maya Kingma, they've been behind her. Uh, spike strength as Taylor Spivey tacks onto the back of that group as well and they really need to work together. She's behind Alaria Zane uh, in seventh and eighth position and then a gap back to non Stanford, Rachel Klammer, 17 seconds back. Cassandra Bogran has lost a couple of places in the first half of this bike, and it just seems like her bike confidence has really evaporated after that bike TT last week. Um, she is very much a confidence athlete, and she's won on these streets before, and already she finds herself uh, significantly back. 20 seconds after the first nine minutes of this race, that doesn't bode well for the French woman who's had so much success here before, as now Georgia Taylor-Brown takes a spin on the front. 
And as I said before, these two know how to work together so, so well. Of course, Taylor Brown picking up two medals at the Olympics, including a gold in the mixed team relay. And she's had quite the six months, as has Jess Learmont. 30 from 30 points she picked up in the SLT Rotterdam Arena Games. And she's on 30 from 30 points after the first two rounds of the Championship Series. She's never been in the Championship Series before, but she's showing the others how it's done. There is no doubt about that. Zane on the back of that group of six now, who are all chasing. Holland, Kingma, a couple of cheetahs in there. The cheetahs are down uh, one as well, which is a bit unfortunate for Annie, not that I'm complaining. <laughs> Enough of that now, Will. They're, they're going to get back up there. I'm sure they are. Maya and Sophie Colwell, great, great cyclists. But as I pointed out earlier, you know, it's just one of those things when the gaps grow, when they start early on, when you've got Jess and Georgia, training partners, best mates, they know one another inside and out. They would have rid ridden this course together. They're just nailing it. You know, this is a race for, for first and second right now of the other athletes don't find something pretty special. The gap is absolutely huge. It's Vicky Holland on the front. She's got Maya Kingra on her wheel. But these girls are going to have to be pretty special if they're going to pull back the two Brits. Yeah, I definitely think, you know, they were, it looks like the, the gap is stretching out a little bit here. And it's difficult to, you know, being part of a group to make sure that you, you know, you keep that gap as small as you can. And obviously going through these corners, being just two people, you can get through them slightly faster. But, this, you know, it's definitely stretched out. I think this is one of the biggest, you know, stretches you've seen. Usually it's really all together. And I think Jess knows that this is the moment for the race where her and George need to work together. Well, they're certainly doing that at this exact moment. And Vicky Holland, you could see, having a few looks behind her as well. Uh, just to ask the rest of the group to come up and have a bit of a turn as she sees uh, her country women disappear in front of her. And these two are obviously part of the same mixed team relay team. As, as Annie said, they know each other so well. And uh, this is not necessarily the kind of course where a group of six is much better than a group of two. Um, there's plenty of plenty of slowing down, plenty of turning, uh, plenty of turning, sorry. And um, these two are just so quality across all the disciplines and Georgia Taylor Brown absolutely knows that she cannot see what happened in Munich happen again this time around and that is for Jess Learmont to disappear into the distance and that could happen on the second swim. She was 15 seconds quicker than Georgia Taylor Brown on the second swim in Munich and it's important for Georgia to be on those feet and preferably have a couple of these members of this group there as well. Yeah, I think Georgia, I think Georgia is definitely thinking, she's probably thinking, yeah, I want another short shoot too. You know, I'm not going to let you go away. We're going to get across this uh, transition line before you and, uh, you know, give the give the race to you, really, and make sure that you make it, you, you race for it. Exactly. And, and it's interesting here because the weakness is with these two. They hardly have them. But Jess is ever so slightly on the run. And for Georgia Taylor-Brown, whilst her swim has absolutely been outstanding this year, the more tired, the more the race goes on, the more time she's going to lose on Jess. Yeah, no, she wants to make sure that she, you know, she doesn't give the, way, the race away, uh, away here. I mean, this is, you know, they really want to try and get through, have a really quick transition. But Jeff really is kind of, a, you know, she's a real smooth machine in this. And she's done this a lot many times before. So it's going to see what's going to happen here. Crucial part of this race. Absolutely. First one across the line, picks up the short shoot. The transition is absolutely important. And it looks like it's going to be Jess Learmont, is it? Yes. So again... Not only does she pick it up again, she denies Georgia Taylor-Brown, and Georgia will know that that is a massive blow. Yeah, that's not two short shoots in a row. So that's going to be, well, you know, this is this is really her race to lose here. And, yeah, she's gone through there and taken the short shoot, yeah. Wow, absolutely amazing. Uh, what, more, what is interesting is actually when the girls are out there on the course, they are no longer best friends. Jess Learmont was giving Georgia Taylor-Brown absolutely nothing when it came to picking up that final short shoot. Yeah, I think Jess definitely got the shoes on there quicker. You could see when they pan back to Georgia, she just was struggling there a bit, and then that really cost her the short shoot. Turning out to be a very lucrative month for Jessica Learmont. She picked up $20,000 in London. She picked up $20,000 for the win in Munich. She's currently leading in the swim jersey, so that's another $20,000. Uh, she's part of the leading team who will pick up a, and pick up a share of $320,000 US dollars if indeed the Eagles do win in the end. And she's not far away on the bike leaderboard. She's picked up some extra points there. In fact, now she's leading that. And she's in the top three on the run leaderboard. So if you want a loan, go and see the bank of Jessica Learmonth, who is absolutely soaking it up and enjoying every minute of September. And 
I tell you what, the people of Jersey will be enjoying this Brit on Brit at the front with a Brit in third as well as Holland continues to hold off the two cheaters there of Sophie Colwell and Maya Kingma. Big crowds too here in Jersey. Always good to see them come out and see the weather hold off. I have to, I have to quote uh, Jess Learmont. This was a little while ago before she signed up to Super League. She said, I thought I was too old and slow for Super League. Well, I tell you what, there is nothing slow about Jess Learmont. Is there, Rich? No, I definitely don't think so. I mean, uh, she definitely plays herself down sometimes and uh, she's a great character to listen to post-interview. Uh, you know, she races hard and her interviews are pretty hard too. So, yeah, I think she's definitely, you know, she's definitely right up there. And she's one to be. She's almost the invincible of the female side, if you could call it that. Absolutely. There is. We've still got two triathlons to go after this, and there is nothing at all behind Georgia Taylor Brown and Jessica Learmouth except for the fresh air of the Channel Islands. Uh, Holland was eight seconds back with Kingma Coldwell. Spivey was 13 seconds back the last time they headed out onto the run. We'll see if the gaps have uh, grown. Rachel Klammer, Victoria Lopez has dropped back into eighth position from Stanford and Zane. Simone Ackerman in 18th is at a minute 01. So I think Gillian Sanders has been eliminated from this race. We'll get confirmation on that in just a second. But there you can see the gap. And it's a group of three now in the chase pack. Holland, Colwell and Maya Kingma. Well, through the first lap of the run. Certainly looking good for the Cheetahs, isn't it, Will? Good to see. Two, oh, great to see. Two of my love athletes it. Absolutely up there love it. In, in the top five. And Vicky Holland as well, racing really, really well. She uh, went into that first in race in London a little bit under the weather, but I, I think she's really shone here in Super League. She's got two great athletes alongside her. Let's see if they can pull anything back. Beth Potter on the other side of the road and a whole host of great athletes trying to run these two down. But I tell you what, they've got their work cut out. So we can just see Georgia Taylor-Brown choosing to pull away ever so slightly, perhaps wanting to give herself a little bit of a buffer in the swim. Yeah. I think this is great to see this. I mean, George is not sitting in. She, she, is no, she knows that uh, Jess's run is kind of her weak point here, Tiny, but she said it herself. And uh, she's definitely, you can see how smooth uh, Georgia Taylor Brown is here on the run. She's really, really got a good, smooth, very relaxed upper shoulders and just kind of moves, rocks a little bit more. But she definitely knows that she's going to make Jess, you know, work for this. Yeah, you can see, if you look at Georgia Taylor Brown, she's really nicely on her toes. Love to watch her run. Very, very smooth. But uh, Jess Learmont certainly runs very well over these short, shorter distances. She won't have any problem, I don't think, getting back onto Georgia Taylor Brown's feet. Uh, but she doesn't want to give any more time away to the likes of Beth Potter and uh, Vicky Holland, Maya Kingma, Sophie Colwell, are all trying to uh, run her down. Yeah, what do you, right, you can see the, the bike leaders' jerseys there, confirmation that Jess Learmont leads that as well. And Georgia Taylor Brown, as you say, Rich, it's absolutely, it's great to see Georgia knowing that she's going to have to deal with a short shoot against her later in the race is to continue to try to put time into Jess Learmont, who has the swimming cap in the hand and getting ready to head back into the water as much as she possibly can. She's probably going to get caught up on this one, but we need to take as much out of Jess Learmont. That's what will that's be going through Georgia Taylor Brown's mind as she possibly can. Confirmation now that she can take both short shoots, Jess Learmont, in the run. So there's two laps of the run. Both times she's going to pick up the short shoot. Probably pick up five seconds on each of them. So heading into that last run, Georgia Taylor Brown will know that she needs to be a good 10 seconds clear if she is going to have a shot of winning this one. She said she was a bit off in Munich, and yet she struggled her way to a silver, which is not a bad effort uh, for a minute by anyone's standards. But if she's on today, she could very well take the fight to the championship leader. There's two championship points between them as it stands. Two firsts for Jess Learmont, two seconds for Georgia Taylor-Brown. Katie Zafiris is currently in third position after two fourth places, but she is well down the order. So this could be, in the end, the fight for the championship between these two women. As into the water they go once again. I think just point, it's important to point out, Will, as well, for anyone just tuning in for the first time to Super League, the athletes swim, bike, run, they don't take a break. Hence why we saw the multitasking there on the run, running along probably around about 3.30 kilometre pace whilst putting on their swim hat and their goggles. You, you can just see there how, quick, how much quicker Jess's transition was. She had her spare shoes down there as well. She threw her shoes in the box. She had spare shoes there, so she actually saved a few seconds just on the transition. The rest yeah, of the lady... It's, it's really interesting to see that, Rich, and you can see those three pairs of shoes for, for Jess Learmont. Almost all the other athletes have just got the single pair. And that just saves her a little tiny bit of time. 
Uh, three pairs, fresh ones for each run. You know, these are the little one percenters that really uh, add up across the course of an enduro and, and any Super League racing. Probably just taking two or three seconds there. It means a little bit less effort to swim up onto Georgia Taylor Brown's feet where she can sit in knowing that she has those short shoots and all the work has to come from the front. And jo as Georgia Taylor Brown heads down that very steep ramp, the television doesn't even show exactly how steep that ramp is. And into the water they go for the second time here in Elizabeth Marina in St. Helier, Jersey with a healthy lead over the rest of the field. It's ballooned out there to 14 seconds as here come the rest of the women's field. Holland into the water. Perio had a very good run. Fastest runner in Munich by three seconds ahead of Katie Zafiris. Kingma there as well from Colwell. So three cheaters all together. Let's hope they work together. Yeah, it looks like Sitting on the hip. 20 second, 20 second gap here. They're actually swimming next to each other, which is quite interesting. I think, I think Jess is starting to pass Georgia here, and uh, it looks like it's interesting from that transition here. It looks like Jess is working smarter, and not harder in some of these legs, which is definitely helping her. I mean, she looks really experienced when it comes to these transitions and parts of the race. Yeah, Richard, that's something. I mean, obviously you're very current. You're, you're still racing, having a bit, a bit of a sabbatical at the moment. But I would be looking at Jess's setup if I was another athlete and going, what's she doing that I need to do in transition to pick up my transition? And for us watching it's pretty obvious why do you think the other athletes haven't chosen to follow what she's doing i think you know it's interesting but they always change for each leg of this event as well and especially the swim when you put your cap and goggles on um you know where you dive in do you let someone go in front of you those types of things and uh, it's definitely you know it's a progression thing and some athletes really force those transition and really focus on them and it gives them the edge so georgia taylor brown by virtue of that run picked up the five run points for the jersey uh Leader, leaderboard and she's now on 13 ahead of Learmonth on 11 so she can take that and put it in a back pocket heading in uh, to Malibu where there'll be more points on offer and of course if you come up with the most jersey points at the end of the season another 20,000 US dollars like a lottery it's like Oprah you get 20,000 and you get 20,000 everybody does but you only get it if you just leave off the Georgia Taylor Brown at the moment because they've turned the boy and they're already heading for boy number two. Just as the, the chasing pack, which has now grown to around 10 athletes, uh, are working together to try and stop those two Brits from disappearing into the distance. But it was 16 seconds as they headed over the swim start with Holland, Coldwell, Leone, Perio, France, Mike Kingma, Beth Potter, Non Stanford, Rachel Clammer and Cassandra Bogran, who, uh, as we said, is a fantastic swimmer, tacking onto the back of that group with Taylor Spivey and Katie Zafiris, who has managed to also tack onto the back of that group as well. And then there's a big, big gap of a further 20 seconds to Yuko Takahashi, Valerie Bartelemy, Ilaria Zane, who was going well in the early uh, swim bike, but has dropped right back, as has Vittoria Lopez. And Emily Morier is currently on my timing sheets, last of all, 52 seconds back. So I've lost a couple of the women. And I think Simone Ackerman has fallen foul of the elimination, as has Gillian Sanders, two South African athletes. But there you go. How about that swim from Jess Learmonth? She was probably 10 seconds back at the end of the run, but a great transition, a smart transition, and then a killer swim, and she's made up all that and more. Yeah, I think Jess is, Jess is literally saying, Georgia, you're going to do it to me on the run, I'm going to give it to you on the swim. It seems like that there's no, there might be training partners when it comes to this race. I think there's uh, there's, there's some shocks here in these uh, in these, uh, these two athletes. Yeah, and, and like, I can, Georgia Taylor Brown just, so I would say, slightly struggling because we would normally expect her to at least see her on Jess's feet, but she's dropped right back now. I mean, okay, it's only two body lengths, but it's a substantial amount, 300 metres. Yeah, she might have pushed the run there a little bit too hard, and it looks like it's paid there a tiny bit the swim perhaps or Jess knows that she actually wants to get a gap here coming out this is this part here I love to call it this is like the foot cheese grates are coming up here you kind of could lose a toe there very easily so you got to be careful running up does hurt the feet quite a lot and uh, this person this part here is quite steep it's about 10 12 percent gradient and yeah that is running through its transition for the second round the foot cheese grater eh? I mean I tell you what if you're gonna lose a toe you want to do it on the first time up there you don't want to carry that extra weight and then lose it towards the back end of the race big group coming out now of the swim and you can see just how quick they swam it was 16 seconds going in it's now 21 seconds uh coming out of the water with Learmonth and taylor brown just streeting the field so jess Learmonth, not only did she swim probably 10 seconds farther faster than georgia taylor brown she probably swam nearly 20 seconds faster over 300 meters than the rest of the chasing pack who could all work together on that one and out they come again the two brits in front of the uh 
the home crowd of sorts here in Jersey, and it's good to see them all turn out once again. And here we head out onto the bike for the second four kilometre stint, and there is the group that's come together. You can see Katie Zafiris, the sole rhino in the yellow in this group. Beth Potter there as well at the back, along with Rachel Clammer and Cassandra Beaugrant. But out first comes Vicky Holland. There is Zafiris. Good to sight her for the first time in this race. There is the short shoot too, to show you exactly how much benefit Jess Learmonth is going to get twice. And out onto the bike comes Georgia Taylor-Brown. You can never overlook Katie Seferis, can you? I mean, it's easy to. She was quite a way back. I'm not quite sure what's happened to her swim this season, but it's definitely not the swim that we saw in, in, in the last seasons of Super League. Um, but she's back in the race now. Well, certainly in the main pack. These are our leaders, Jess Learmont, Georgia Taylor-Brown from Great Britain. Yeah, you could see George, uh, Jess actually, uh, Georgia actually went a bit widely on that corner and Jess took the inside on her, so she got that corner kind of wrong there, which can happen in the wet, that's treacherous. A lot of athletes have gone down there a couple of years ago in the wet. And uh, I think uh, Jess's kind of bike handling skills looks a little bit better than Georgia, actually, if you take a look at it. She's very precise. She'll cut this corner in very early here on this section instead of going wide. And, uh, yeah, she definitely makes, uh, you know, Georgia work for it in some of these corners. And, uh, and we saw again, actually, this time round, Georgia Taylor-Brown had a slightly better, better transition because she was a few seconds down out of the water, but she pulled something back. I think at this stage in the race, Richard, it's quite important that these two stick together and work together and gain as much advantage as they can over the chase pack. Yeah, definitely. They want to work together, but you can obviously see in the swim and the run part, on the bike they're sticking together, but on the run and the swim they're actually making each other hurt to some degree as well, uh, which actually probably hurts hurts their deficit a bit, but I think once you have 20, 30 seconds to play with in this type of event, you know, that's enough a little bit. The Eagles have extended their lead at the front, and it's all thanks to Jess Learmonth just picking up a bunch of jersey points. The Scorpion is still sitting in second. The Cheetahs are holding off the Rhinos in the battle for the wooden spoon. We're going to keep an eye on that. And at the moment, in terms of eliminated athletes, Simone Ackerman is one of those. There's a couple more as well. And one of them is Gillian Sanders, and she's down with Kate for a chat. Yeah, I've got Gillian here with me. Gillian, talk to us about what happened. I know you've been doing your transition practice all this week, but it wasn't that that took you down this time. No, I nailed my transition, but um, coming out, you know, towards the back of the swim, the back of you girls, you're always chasing on the bike and taking a few more risks than what you should. And yeah, I just overcooked the roundabout. I slid out. Luckily, I haven't hurt myself too badly. I think just like kind of superficial stuff, but it's never nice like hitting the deck hard. Um, but yeah, I think I'll be okay. Just need to support my teammates now. And yeah, hopefully it'll sting a bit in the shower, but I think I'll be all right. Yeah, she's been very brave this up because I just seen you being patched up in the medical tent. They're doing a great job here, but it did look, did look pretty naughty. We talked about that point in the race earlier in uh, as we were building up to this. It was tough then. That transit, the bit where you came off your bike. Yeah, so it's my first time racing here and everyone always said everyone crashes on the roundabout. But practicing it in the um, familiarization, I seemed to like nail it. It was absolutely fine. So I have no idea what happened. Like It always happens so quickly. I can only think I was just taking it, you know, taking a few more risks to try and get onto the group and just slip down. So, All right, that is Super League track on. Bad luck, Gillian. Thank you. See you later. All right, she's eliminated, but it sounds like a party down in the Boa Endure recovery tent. Uh, so Gillian Sanders and Simone Ackerman, uh, the two South Africans, have been the two that are eliminated. And the gap now 25 seconds between those two Brits and the rest of the field as they head around the dead turn at the top of the course and into the back end of the course. And as Rich said, this is the fastest part by Kingma. Uh, heading up the back of that group as they head along the waterside, but already on the black carpet and with two laps to go in the second bike is Georgia Taylor-Brown and Jess Learmonth, both Olympic gold medalists and both putting down a big marker to the rest of the field here at home in Jersey. And look at Tim Don there on the left of the screen, just willing Jess Learmonth on his absolute points machine. He has put... <laughs> The Eagles at the pointy end, the, the women that he has in terms of Jess Lima, Taylor Spivey, Vicky Holland, Victoria Lopez, all of them picking up huge points hauls. Yeah, I think, you know, the other girls must feel like a bit of a punching bag here for these two in, in, in the front of the event. I mean, it's very difficult to, you know, to try and keep yourself motivated and keep pushing through here to try and keep it. But, 
they definitely you can see how Jess took this corner. She pushed out wide, cut out wide on the section here, pushing through towards the fence. Definitely perfectly handled, really good handling skills. I think what's very interesting about Jess is she came originally from football and then she picked up the swimming and she hasn't really been racing that long. She rides a bike like a pro though. She does, she does. You can see how she has her head up, she goes through the corner, she, she leans her bike nicely, she doesn't lean from the shoulders, and uh, yeah, she just really, really is super, super focused, you know, this is, this is everything, and she really, really is doing well. It's amazing to see such a big, you know, crowd of people here. It's been such a long time since you have people lining the streets. Well, I think we can safely say, can't we, that... Uh, <laughs> Jersey is to Super League what Monaco is to Formula One, Wimbledon to tennis. You know, this is the home of Super League. It's the fourth time the athletes have been racing. And it's just a wonderful place to be because triathlon Super League is so massive in this little island. No, it definitely is. This is definitely, you know, uh, this is the play. This is the home of Super League, really, and it's been here for the po past four or five years type of thing. And it's amazing, amazing amphitheatre here. You see them coming through the brick section here. That's where they come up the ramp on the side. They push on through a very tight section. Here. You've got to push towards the little barrier here. And uh, yeah, I think this is so. This is the last. This might be mistaken, but the last uh, lap of the bike here. And we're going to be interesting to see what the gaps are here coming through. Yeah, there's um, some issues with the timing on screen, but I can tell you it was 32 seconds between these two and the rest of the field last time through transition. I'm going to get an update uh, when it comes onto my timing screens in just a second as they head back out on the last lap of the run. But what will happen is that the pace of these two Brits at the front is going to cause mass eliminations when it comes to the last of the three triathlons because, of course, the 90-second rule is in effect. It was 32 seconds before... The chasing pack, and they're all chasing basically the third spot on the podium at the moment, uh, is 10 women. Rachel Clammer there has moved to the front. And a little fist pump there I can see from Rich Murray, of course, is Rachel's partner, as they head around the first turn back on to the black carpet and they head back up again and you can see the big numbers there counted down from 90 is now at 40 as they head out so it's 38 seconds from Clamour, Stanford, Holland, Colwell, Spivey, Perio, Zephyrus, Kingma, Potter and Bogran. So 10 women in that group. I'll keep you posted on the 90 second rule because it's going to start claiming more than just the two South Africans very, very soon. So one more lap of this bike. They're going to head back out onto the run once again. And that will be the end of the second of three triathlons. And don't forget, it's not going to be long before the men hit this one as well. So you're going to get served up six triathlons over two hours. There's a lot of swim, bike and run in Super League. Yeah. One minute back now to Yuko Takahashi. Sorry, Rich. So she's in 13th position, the first one through. And she's all by herself. Um, behind this group of 10, and she's at one minute. Victoria Lopez, a minute 10. Emily Moray, 122. Alaria Zane, 123. Valerie Bartelme, 128. So they are all right on the bubble. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. They get out their shoes here on the section, going through this very tight, very sketchy, going through here with your feet not even in your cycling shoes. Uh, could end up being very nasty. And, um, yeah, so they jump off here. It's going to be interesting to check the transitions here between uh, Jess, Jess and Georgia, just to see who's got the one-up here on each other. Where was the placement of Georgia Taylor-Brown's running shoes? Did she get it right? Of course, we know that Jess Learmonth has a spare pair sitting right there. A better transition this time onto the run from Taylor-Brown, and she'll head out first. This is the run she really has to hit the hammer, Georgia Taylor-Brown, if she's going to break this open, if she's going to deny Jess Learmonth the third win. And this is where the conditioning really comes into it. So much racing over the last few months and it's about who has anything left in the legs at this point of a race when they've been through five disciplines already they've punched it on the bike faster than anybody else rich where are the, where are your legs at this point in a race what well, where's the burn at this point after swim bike run swim bike back out onto the run yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, the endurance factor here really plays a key role in these athletes. And uh, Georgia and both Jess are, are great over the Olympic distance, sprint distance. They're probably even good over the half distance even. And so this is really, really the part where they get into the element. A lot of athletes, you know, might struggle in the first round and the second round, come around a bit better, like Rachel Klammer was there on the front of the group. She went kind of on, almost from the back to the front of the group during the bike, and that's not her strength. But over these races, the girls obviously get a bit stronger, certain athletes. And you can see it, there's four Brits now here in the front as well. Uh, with uh, a non-standard pin, Vicky Holland heading up the chase group here on them. 
Yeah, not only four Brits in the lead, but five in the top six with Sophie Caldwell there sitting behind, I think, Leone Perio. And then Katie Zafiris had moved up into about seventh position. But they're all just chasing minor placings at the moment as Learmonth has managed to attach herself to the back of Georgia Taylor Brown. There is the group. Beth Potter is not running through the field in the same way. Cassandra Bogran has still got the running cap, the swim cap on. She might have kept that on for the entire race. Could have been under the uh, bike helmet. We haven't been able to see that, but there is the beautiful running, running form of Georgia Taylor Brown. But she's not managing to gap Learmonth this time. No, it looks it looks like she's uh, you know I think Georgia Georgia might be thinking yeah maybe we'll wait up a tiny bit or or Jess actually pushed on at that little climb going out of transition there to get onto the back of the feet of it she knows that uh, she doesn't want to have to work harder than she needs to for the rest of the run. Yeah, and I think definitely looking ahead to the swim, which is going to be the crucial part, it probably is the only part where Jess is going to really be able to break her. I think Georgia may be a, aware that perhaps she gave too much to that last run, and that's why she just blew in those last sort of. 100 meters of the swim yeah that, that can be the case and uh, i think george is probably in the johnny johnny brownlee position here against vincent louis from last weekend where she's kind of thinking how on earth am i going to take it out have we just coined a phrase there the johnny brownlee position the the, the one where you know you, you're doing your best but you don't have a short shoot please let that not be the case for the sake of the people of jersey and racing let's get johnny a short shoot this time around but maybe just conserving a little bit, Taylor Brown, knowing that she's going to have to give everything in the last swim, bike and run. I can tell you that the Italian Ilaria Zane has been eliminated and Valerie Bartellamy was on the bubble. She squeaked in at 90 seconds across the mount line, so she remains in for at least another lap. But the pace that these two women are going is not going to last long before we see the end of her, Emily Morier and Victoria Lopez, who are all very, very close if this pace keeps up at the front. So one more 800 metre lap on the run and then it is back for just a cheeky triathlon at the back end, swim, bike and run. Well, it's really good to see Tim Dawn out on the course, isn't it? I mean, he's taking this managerial role very seriously indeed. I've seen him every time the girls have come round. He's shouting timings, he's shouting advice. As we see now, that chase group coming round. Leone Perio, who finished fifth in the Olympics, she's leading that group, but she's got some pretty speedy runners in there. Beth Potter's in there, non-standard. Rachel Klammer, fourth in the Olympics, third here back in 2019 in the Enduro. What are you expecting from Rachel today? She's had a bit of a rocky start she's just she's just fallen off the running pack here so unfortunately i think that the bike and the partner she, she had a bit of a struggle coming into this one she wasn't really 100 percent keen or motivated on it which is difficult you know three weekends in a row but the ones that are watching the front i think is cassandra bergron and katie's affairs because they were off slightly a bit but they're in the in the mix now you can see the girls coming back they can give each other you know the eye out when they head through this corner and be like mm, what do you what do you have left you know just having a very look impressive now. performances from sorry and it's just really impressive performance from vicky holland again we should point that out because she's yeah. hanging off the back of leone perio who was the fastest runner out there uh last time around in munich and she's sitting there in front of beth potter who we know ran a 14 41 5k not too long ago just before the arena games where she was so prominent in rotterdam and here we are in the same position again as they put the swim caps on again and this time it's not eight or ten seconds but it's uh maybe more like eight or ten feet between taylor brown and Learmont. and this is the big question can georgia taylor brown hold on to the feet of jessica Learmont in the third swim after what happened in the second swim did she push too fast in the run uh, and that's why she couldn't hold on last time around or well, it's Jess Learmonth just too fast. As we said, 15 seconds each time, faster than everyone else in the top five in the swim in Munich. And the, the swim in Munich, which included, of course, the run up to transition, and also probably was a little longer than this swim, but still, the pace just too hot from Learmonth in the water. She says she uses it to recover the swim. Whereas if I swim 50 metres, I need to sit out for five minutes. Oh, my goodness. There you go. I tell you what, I think Jess uh, Learmonth has hung on really well. Rich and I have both had a look at one another there when you talked about what's going to happen in the water. And I can only see Jess really putting the hammer down now because I think that's where she's got to do it. Yeah, you can see the shoes here. It looks like... Um 
Georgia had a better transition on this one and uh, and Jess threw her shoes into the box there. So they're going to be into the swim yet together. And yeah, I wonder I wonder what's going through Georgia's mind at the start. What do, what do you think about What do you think she's thinking, Annie? She's thinking, how on earth am I going to stay on my best mate's feet over 300 meters? Because you can guarantee Jess is going to get out the water. She's going to put the absolute hammer down uh, on, on the bike. She knows that Georgia really is the superior runner. Um, so I think it's all about this swim now as we see that chase pack coming in, led by Vicky. Holland, the Brits, of course, doing excellently here in Jersey, aren't they, Will? Apologise again for the timing issues that we're having with the graphics on screen. The timing, of course, is uh, is fine on my screens, and I'll keep you updated with all of that uh, as they come across again. And at the moment, well, Taylor Brown and Learmonth, of course, 40 seconds back to Holland, Perio, Potter, Stanford. Zephyrus Bogran, and then there's a mini gap of four seconds to Taylor Spivey, and then another gap back to Sophie Colwell, and then Rachel Klammer at 52 seconds adrift. So at the moment, it's these two, one and two. It depends, well, you'd say you'd back Learmonth with two short shoots that are worth probably around five seconds each to take the win, barring any incident, depending on how things pan out, anything can happen in a swim, bike and run. And then it's up to the rest of those women led by Vicky Holland to see who takes that other step on the podium. Yeah. But there you go. She's managed to hold on just for this period up to the first boy. And there is Holland who will head into the water in third position from Perio Potter. Zephyrus is there as well with Stanford. There is Cassandra Bogran, Taylor Spivey. Rachel and Klarman, who Sophie, is there at Sophie, the end? Sophie Godwell oh, and Rachel well. Klarman. Yeah, and Klarman. So there's your group of nine. It'll be interesting. With these two at the front. It'll be interesting to see whether they come together, that group at the back, because they were split out from the run there a bit. But I think uh, Emily Morier is also, I think, out here. I think she they might be out in the 90-second rule there uh, from the run. There's Victoria just, Lopez too. It's Maya King that so coming. Lopez oh, doing what she does, isn't she? Lopez doing what she does, which is... Absolutely hammer it early, look to pick up some jersey points and then have some trouble in the midpoint of the race and end up dropping out. But she figures well early and she's very smart in terms of picking up those swim points and also on the bike. She was leading with the bike points coming into this one uh, before Jess Learmont stole the lead from her. But closer between these two women than it was last time around. I think that we can see, Will, that uh, Jess has just decided that she's going to put her foot down on the accelerator. She knows she's got to go now. A little glance, well, that's just the head turn, isn't it, over her shoulder there to see where Georgia is. But Georgia now really dropping off. And once you've lost contact, it gets tougher, doesn't it? You lose more and more time. Yeah, the further you get off here as well, motivation-wise, your brain's thinking, no, she's leaving me. No, I've got to keep going as hard as I can, but I am. You know, I can't push any harder than this. And I think um, Jess's turnover here is also really, really fast, slightly faster than, than George's behind her. Uh, and so they round this, this last boy here. The athletes by this time know exactly the angle, so they, don't, they barely even need to look up. They just turn around, keep the head down, and then that, they're almost like a missile. They just know exactly where to go. Just looking at that graphic, Will, their 55 points lead the Eagles have. It's pretty insurmountable at this. My heart sinks, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty insurmountable advantage, I think, at this point. We'll head back down to the Boa tent now where Kate has found Victoria Lopez, who we said figured so early, but just been eliminated, Kate? Certainly have, yeah. Three swim points for you, Victoria, so well done, but you have been eliminated. What does it feel like when you're seeing that clock go and you know that this is the end of your race? Uh, yeah, now it's so hard to race after Tokyo because it's a lot of, like, pressure for yourself. And, uh, and we come here to race Super League and a lot of people, a lot of different kind of race. And you can help your team. It's like the feeling is good because you enjoy the race, you have fun, and also you help your team. Certainly have, Victoria. See you in Malibu. Thank you. Outstanding. Uh, certainly doing the job for Tim Don's Eagles is Victoria Lopez alongside Taylor Spivey, who's figured throughout Jess Learmonth, who's been leading and picking up all manner of points as well and Vicky Holland is the other one who could end up on the podium too but there you go there is the gap between Jess Learmont and Georgia Taylor Brown as they head up the cheese grater uh, for the third time and it's going to be 
out of these two women, put another 10 seconds in your head that Jess Learmonth is leading because she has both of those short shoots if you're just joining us. And Georgia Taylor-Brown knows that she's going to have to have one of the great bike runs she has ever had if she's going to avoid being relegated to second for the third week running. I think she's absolutely going to put the hammer down uh, on the bike. I can't see her really doing anything. We can see now she's already out of transition. Georgia just grabbing her bike now. Yeah, she must have, Georgia, nailed that transition right there. I think she knows on the run she's going to have to go out like the clappers. I think to get away from uh, Jesse on the bike is going to be very, very tough with all these, uh, you know, very tight corners and everything and, and just being so strong. Oh, she must watch it. Oh, no, there was a crash again. Oh, she's down again. She is down again. Georgia Taylor-Brown knew she had to do the job. And that is race one, just about, for Jess Learmont. She had a crash early in London. She's had another one here. She had a flat tyre in the Olympics. She has not had the luck. And Georgia Taylor-Brown is down. She, she will be so mad with herself for that. She was looking down and rode straight into the barrier. You would wonder to see what's going to happen if Jess is now going to wait in the name of sportsmanship to see whether George is going to come back on her and they can have a fair race. This will be interesting to see what's going to happen. I don't think she's going to wait. Would you, would you do that, Rich I've, and Murray? Would I've you once, do that? Some, I've heard that someone once done it to me before. They saw me crash. We raced the whole race together. They waited uh, for me. And she was looking down here, not forwards. Oh, she Luckily, oh, she didn't lose dear, a toe there. On, on cool girl era. School girl I think just there. looking down, you could see. Uh, no, I, when I saw her looking down, I said, "Please look up," and she rode straight into it. And that's, you know, things like this can happen. She's been down twice now in two races, and I think Jess you, <laughs> is Jess looking is here and going, She's gone. "I've won. I'll take a short shoot as well." Thank you. <laughs> Knowing Jess Learmont, though, she will absolutely give it 110%, even if she doesn't need to. She has no off switch, and she will punch it. And you can see, you almost see. Georgia Taylor-Brown admonishing herself for that and she must have looked at Richard Murray's uh, course preview because she couldn't get the shoes on properly out of uh, after the mount line. It's yeah. a problem for everyone from the average rookie triathlete like myself all the way through to the absolute best of the best like Richard Murray and Georgia Taylor-Brown. I was just uh, looking at uh, Jess thinking she's making a bit of a hash of getting her feet into those shoes, but she was doing the sensible thing, taking her time as Georgia Taylor-Brown was, you know, making the error of looking down at her feet and not looking where she's going. Anyway, we'll say no more about that because she's going to be as furious with herself as she can be because that is her race win lost really at this point. Yeah, I think we were looking at her trying to see if she was going to break away, but I think uh, she almost broke something else there. But. Um, no, I think it's uh, yeah, this is a tough scenario to be in now, and she's almost got to say, you know, she's got to, they've got enough gap there, so second place is probably you know put up for her as well. But it's been interesting to see what's going on behind you as well, because I think Jess, Jess might even take. I mean, you're going to see if there aren't being more eliminations happening here with the times being so close at the back. Yeah, I can give you an update on that, and we could end up with under half the field finishing this race. Mike King, we're in 12th position, is right on the bubble now at a minute 30, so we'll keep you updated with that one. Jess Learmont, too, I mean, she's been so perfect uh, in the 30 from 30 championship points. She could take 29 of the available 30 points for this race by picking up the full 15 individual. She was the first across the line in the swim, that's five points. She was the first across the line in the bike, that's five points. And she was second across the line in the run, so that's four, so that's 29 out of 30, with only denied by Georgia Taylor-Brown running across the mount line the last time in the lead. And what can you say? We've run out of superlatives for Jess Learmont, who will now bike her way into transition soon enough and run her way home and Georgia Taylor Brown she is giving it everything to try to get back onto the back of her uh, of her countrywoman well let's not forget in London Georgia Taylor Brown until she had that crash in London she's been our only well fooler apart from Gillian Saunders I think in, in, in three races now both of them have been mistakes on on her part but in London she was riding incredibly well it looks to me like she's pulling a little bit back but I think the distance is too far when you think they've only got one mile to run. No, I think even if she does get up, you know, onto the back of her, she's still got those two short shoots on the run that she has in her back pocket. Uh, but, you know, nothing nothing, nothing is uh, set in stone here until, until you cross that finishing line. So that's the one awesome thing about Super League. It's unpredictable. Anything can happen.
All right, 51 seconds in arrears now as this group fighting for third position. And right now on the front is Don Stanford. Uh, Taylor Spivey's moved her way up. No, she's going to need a big run. And when you look at all these women, you can see Beth Potter there at the back. Beth Potter and Leonie Perio, the two at the back of the bike, probably have the most superior runs. Uh, Cassandra Bogran, however, has run faster than Potter today. She's running at a 2.58 pace in the opening stage. Leonie Perio ran at 2.56 in stage one pace. So she is at the top of the timesheets in terms of quick runs. So the run for the third step of the podium is going to be a really interesting one between the powerhouse runners of short course triathlon, Imperio, Potter, Bo Gran, Zephyrus, and all of them will be very eager to make sure they spray the champagne today in Jersey. Yeah, we definitely got to see. We got to see a bike or get something in there so we can see the the race within the race here for third place. Absolutely. I mean, it's interesting to see the French uh, girl, Cassandra Vaugrand, because she's a girl who I've really bigged up over the last couple of years. We've all been waiting for her to do something pretty special. And she has done in Super League. She uh, won the triple mix here in 2018. And, and in 2019, she won the Enduro. She is an amazing athlete, but she has underperformed in the first two races here. But good to see her now fighting out for that third position in the chase pack. Yeah, that, that third place is definitely, you know, Beth Potter is definitely one you'd, you'd, you'd favour up being up in there, Katie Zafira is, uh, you know, is definitely going to be another one to watch there for third place. Yeah, I have to, have to mention uh, Beth Potter with that uh, world best on the road 5k back in April 1442, Richard. What does that, what does that mean to you for a woman to run that kind of time? No, that's, that, that, that truly, truly is lightning, lightning fast. And especially over this, you know, when it comes down, the run here kind of is, is, is the, this last run is where your race is made or lost. Did I deny her nine seconds? I think I said it's 40.51. I was 48.42. It was even faster than that. Sorry, Beth. Do you know what? I'm going to Jeez. correct myself, Will, because I was speaking to her last week and I said 14.42, and she said, no, Annie, it was 14.41, and every second oh, counts. Oh, 10 seconds. <laughs> right, of course. She gets faster every time we tell the stories. Like, all my stories, they get better every time I tell them. There is the group uh, that are going to run it out for the third step of the podium, and there is your championship leader, your bike jersey leader, your swim jersey leader, and your race leader, Jessica Learmonth. And there in the background is Georgia Taylor-Brown, who is still paying for that mistake. We can see back on the black carpet there on the first, well, part of this last bike. And she will, if we speak to her post-race, be admonishing herself. She is a perfectionist like they all are, and she will be inside seething at making another mistake on the As around the treacherous uh, roundabout they go near the Radisson Hotel. She has biked herself back 10 seconds though, Georgia Taylor-Brown. Oh, sorry, she's back 10 seconds from Jess Learmonth, uh, which is probably a little bit closer than she was at the start. Maya King has been eliminated, so we have 11 women in this race and every single one of them are in that pack that are chasing. So. Every single one of the women left in this race are in that pack who are fighting it out for the podium. What are the racing than Super League racing? Would you see the person who is last in the race right now, who is Beth Potter, fighting it out for a podium? And I think there's a problem, and we'll get another look at it soon, with Georgia Taylor-Brown's bike seat. It has been bent, and she obviously is probably in a little bit of discomfort biking out there. And we're going to head down to a latest eliminated athlete, which is Maya King, but she's with Kate. Yeah, that's right. I've got Maya with me here. He's just been eliminated. Maya, talk to me about the pace that these athletes are going at today. <laughs> yeah. You know, for the swim and the bike, I'm absolutely fine. But it's a running. That's just 50 on the beat of sprint. And uh, yeah, that's just way too fast for me. I'm, I'm happy if I can run at 10 pace. 10k pace and that's uh yeah that's, that's a big difference from, from the speed they, they generate now it's uh, incredible it's an unbelievable race and just technically so difficult as well isn't it yeah but i think it's just an all-out sprint and just yeah, I, I think also if you look at the times like it's it, it slows down every heat uh, so i don't think anyone is thinking too much it's, it's just all out from the start and uh, yeah, very fast. Amazing stuff. Well, bad luck and well done, and we'll see you in Malibu. <laughs> Always smiley, Maya Kimmerin. You could see there a couple of shots of Georgia Taylor Brown's bike seat was pointing down. Uh, part of what happened when she had that accident on the black carpet, and now 
Jess Learmont is 1.5 probably kilometres from another race win. Three from three in a perfect September. So I'm just, I'm hearing now that Georgia Taylor Brown actually took a short shoot. So we understood that Jess had both, but I think that she is, I think she's made an error there, Georgia Taylor Brown, thinking that because Jess Learmonth had one short shoot, it rolled down to the next athlete. But the rule actually states that Jess can take both those short shoots because there's two laps of the run. So we'll keep you updated as to what that means for Georgia Taylor Brown. Jess Learmont also took the short shoot in that opening lap. So whether or not Jess knows the rule and she knows she can take another one is a question we're going to have answered in 400 metres time. But we'll get an official ruling onto what happens with Georgia Taylor Brown's short shoot and whether that disqualifies her or causes her a time penalty in this race and potentially second position and some valuable points too but at the me in the meantime we've still got another lap of this run yeah that might have been she might have followed uh, jess there by accident perhaps because sometimes when you're racing you follow people so that might have been might have been the case but no that's terrible to see something like that you know by accident i've got confirmation now that georgia taylor brown will be disqualified in this race. She doesn't know it yet, but suddenly Georgia Taylor Brown is out. She will drop right down the championship standings heading into Malibu. And that basically hands Jessica Learmont the SLT championship title. She can have a good race next week and she'll find out about that after the race. Meantime, Vicky Holland non-stand for Taylor Spivey, Sophie Colwell, Leonie Perio, Cassandra Bocran, Katie Zafiris and Rachel Clammer and Beth Potter are fighting it out for second and third position. And Georgia Taylor Brown will be stopped on this lap. So watch out for that. There she is in the background. I'm hearing she's going to be stopped. And there is the elimination flag for Taylor Brown. She doesn't think it's for her, but it is. And she's wondering what the problem is. And she's saying, I, I can take the short shoot. What are you talking about? So she's been showing the yellow flag. She's not going to stop racing, though, and she's going to argue the point afterwards. Wow. wow but she's absolutely been told she's eliminated. She's looking around going, what's going on? What do you mean? I have my heart in oh. my mouth for her. I really this do. This is she, horrible to watch. She has no idea what is going on. Rich, I, I, she'd already taken exited on the run twice before. I don't think she took that by accident. Did she think she had the I short think, shoot? I think she might have taken that short shoot by pure accident. I think her crash and things and stuff might have been a few, you know, small mistakes that happened under the heat of the moment. And now she's thinking, what on, are they, are, they con, is, are, are they confused on what's going on? And I think it's a very difficult point to be at as athlete. I've been here once before. We won't go back to that. But it's definitely very, very tricky. You want to just, you know, you're an athlete, you're racing. You don't want anything outside to stop you. And, and, the, and the fact that she's continued to race is maybe not a crazy idea because if she does appeal, we don't know yet. It is a race official that has said, no, you are out of the race. But I think she thinks she can fight it. We're looking now at Vicky Holland. She's leading the way, technically in second position, I think we can say, because Georgia Taylor-Brown uh, has been thrown out of the race. Cassandra Beaugrand on her heels. Leone Perio from France sitting in fourth. This is the battle for second position as it stands, pending an appeal from Georgia Taylor-Brown. And Vicky Holland continues to impress across, the, across this September, leading from Cassandra Beaugrand, widely considered the best runner in short course. And Leonie Perio, the two French women who obviously grew up in French Grand Prix racing, know how to race these distances and uh, help take France to a mixed team relay bronze medal in Tokyo about six odd weeks ago. And I think and you see, oh, you see her, with, Je her with Jess as well. Jess has also got some blood going on her, on her right calf. I don't know whether she, something happened to her, but uh, wow, this is uh, you know difficult to watch this to, just to see uh, you know Georgia coming to you. This is Super League racing. This is why we love it. It's unpredictable. Anything can happen right down to the wire. So uh, it's fair to say all three of us in commentary are gutted for Georgia Taylor Brown. I'll keep you updated throughout the men's race as to any appeals process or any other news that comes through on that one, what it means for the, ch the championship, what it means for the team points. 
But at the moment, we can shelve all of that because we just need to celebrate how strong Jess Learmonth is. She had two short shoots. She used one. She doesn't know now whether she needs to take the other one. It's not going to matter in the end anyway because she is going to run away to another victory. Three from three. There is the finishing line, and the fans here in Jersey absolutely loves it. She takes the other short shoot for good measure. She deserves it too, and here she comes down the black carpet. Big crowd here in Jersey. Beautiful day, and they're loving the fact that Jess Learmonth is your winner again. She raises the black tape. Jess Learmonth, the winner in London, the winner in Munich, and now the winner in Jersey. Georgia ran the short shoot loop an extra time to add the extra distance, so that may make a difference. We'll let you know as that happens. She did an extra loop. She asked the question. At the moment, she thinks she's in second. And it's it's not fun to watch. And it's Cassandra Bogran after, honestly, a couple of really flat weeks and a tough 2021, punctuated by a bronze medal, of course, in the Olympics. She shows her run form. She runs past Vicky Holland. Cassandra Bogran picks up a podium spot. And she has earned it. Look at that. She's given everything and more power to her. It really hurt her not being up the pointy end the last couple of weeks. And she's put in and it's paid off with a podium. But there is your champion. You can see the bodies hit the deck. You can hear the raised voices in the background too. Cassandra Bogran end up coming in 45 seconds clear. Let's listen in. What they were doing, okay, they were shouting, not one, not two. And that's what's confusing, I think, is the comments. I think the comments is confusing. Well, the Brits are getting around Georgia Taylor Brown. As I said, we're, we're going to keep you updated as to what's happened. She's obviously unhappy at the moment. And as soon as I have any news to hand about this, I will let you know. And yeah, visibly distressed Georgia Taylor Brown. And she's such a stalwart of Super League. You can see how much it means to her. We're going to have a look back at what happened and try to tell the story of how this worked. So this is the first time she took the short shoot when she didn't have it. So potentially she thought that because Jess Learmonth had taken the first one at the swim that she could do it on the bike. She gave herself an extra lap to do the extra distance the second time around after a 1.6K run in which she was extremely confused. Then she ran across the line and we're going to, well, our rule makers right now are having the discussion, as you can see, about what that means for her race, for the championship points, for the run points, and for whether or not Cassandra Bogran is joined by Vicky Holland on the podium in second and third, or indeed in third and fourth. And there is Taylor Brown, distressing pitches, as, as we say. She's one of the much loved members of Super League Triathlon, but there's a rule book in place and there's plenty inside it. So, don't know what more to say than that. We'll keep you posted on that one. Jess Learmonth at the moment, we'd love to hear from her, but of course the priority is for her to comfort her friends. So it wouldn't be a trip to Jersey without some controversy. We had to ditch the bike altogether in 2019. We of course missed 2020 as the men head out to set up for their race. And there it is, the short shoot. It was controversial before, and now it's played a role in this race. And it's what makes Super League great, it has to be said. Vincent Lewis in the Phoenix cap on the right of your screen, the championship leader in the Scorpions gear, getting ready to rack his bike in position number one. They'll all be chasing him in the men's race. Beautiful day here in Jersey. We're going to head down right now and you can see on the right hand side of your screen kate rich and ali are on the black carpet and kate i tell you what what a race twists and turns and dominance again from the brits
Yes, what a race indeed. Jess Limith is the winner here in Jersey, but that's not the big story. I've got Rich Murray here alongside me with Annie again, of course. Rich, start on how you're feeling watching those scenes at the end there. Georgia Taylor Brown absolutely devastated by what went wrong. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was very painful to watch and commentate on. And uh, you never want to see someone come down on a bike and you never want to see them obviously lose their top step or that podium uh, per se from something like that. It's not, not great to see. What, did, what was your read on it, Annie? Because we saw her getting eliminated. We saw the yellow flag being shown to Georgia and she kept running. You said, smart move. Well, I thought she might be able to appeal at the end. You, you never know. But I think it was uh, pretty emphatic, the decision that she had cut the course. And OK, she finished at the end. She added it on. She had a huge advantage over the chase pack, but she still cut the course. So obviously, the thing about Super League, one of the many things that's so exciting about it, why we enjoy it so much, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to think about. But the rules are just a whole other element, Rich. What, what, what's your read on, on what she thought was going on, Georgia? Yeah, so, I mean, I've been in a similar position once before, a couple of years back, and it's very difficult as an athlete, you know, to stop. You know, your job is to get to that finishing line. That's what you do. So it was actually great of her to, you know, to see her continue through. And you can see through the run, she was kind of thinking, you know, what is going on here? And she must have probably thought through a run, oh, my goodness, I think I took the short shoot. So probably a mistake from her side, from maybe from the bike that went across onto the run. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully we'll see what happens with that. I'm not 100% sure. The outcome. We're just seeing on the pictures now her coming through, her being shown that flag, and then her just saying what's going on. And as we were, we were quite nearby, speaking and talking to who everyone around here after the end of the race, Annie. And she was saying, I was hearing someone say short shoot. I was hearing someone say short shoot. Well, she went with what she heard, and perhaps not what was her gut feeling. But you know, she, I think she'd been unnerved by that crash, as we saw in London when she crashed, and that really unnerves and unsettles an athlete. And then you don't make sensible decisions. So a really difficult day for Georgia, but all I can say is I think she'll come back fighting next week. Yeah, that was that was another gutting moment that we haven't even talked about as well, just that moment where she's looking down. And it's, again, that's a moment of confusion where she's just too focused on the task in hand, Annie. Uh, a little bit. I mean, it was a schoolgirl error. She'll be so mad. No one will be more mad with Georgia Taylor You can see that, can you? You really yeah, can see what her. What have I done? What have I done? Head. I'm looking down. She's gone straight into the barrier. But this is Super League. It's so quick. It's so fast. She knew that she needed to be on Jet his wheel and she and, and it all kind of started to go a little bit wrong for her there okay yeah i mean i think we've uh, we've suffered alongside her to be honest georgia here and, and we'll find out what exactly happens but it seems to be clear that she has been eliminated and she carried on racing to no avail basically so let's talk a little bit about the winner Jess Limmer, another unbelievable performance from her and uh, and she was consoling her GB teammate at the end there, Rich. Yeah, I mean, that was a dominant performance. I mean, I was just thinking of it's all the jerseys for Jess is what was coming into the back of my mind. I mean, she took, she took I think she took the bike leader's jersey, I think the run leader's jersey, I think as well, or something like that. Something like that. Crazy how many, how many accolades she's grabbed from this weekend and it goes to show from last weekend it was two rounds in a row. She had that strength. Now it's three rounds in a row. It was really her race to lose after she got those two short shoots. All right, we can now, I believe, get to Jess with Annie. Jess Learmont. Wow. Three out of three. Other things going on the race. Let's talk about your race, though, first. What a race. You've won from start to finish. How are you doing it? You came into this series going, I think I'm too old. You freed yeah. yourself wrong. Well, the thing with Enduro is, I guess we were an hour, so I do feel like I get going. Uh, but I, I think the why it is is the short shoot sort of stuff, you know, like the fact that I'm pushing through transition. I think it's just getting that gap, whereas normally I probably just like saunder a bit. Um, so I think it's just making me go even harder out of the swim to get that gap. And then, yeah, it's, it's, it's so technical. You hardly pedal, honestly. It's like you just pedal a bit corner, pedal a bit corner. So these. Um, very tactical um, in, in the last swim when you when you pushed on when Georgia was still in the race. Was that in your mind? Um, what do you mean? When, what do you mean? Sir? Sorry, <laughs> when you pushed away on the swim, was oh, that in your mind to break no, Georgia? Not really, I was honestly just trying to recover because I do find that the swim helps me get back into things. Um, so yeah, I just kind of let my legs relax and just do all my arms so I can't I, I couldn't really see but I did like keep looking around but she didn't drop off much we were literally in it together so that's why I was fuming when she made the mistakes I thought uh, do you know when you just don't what you want a full battle like with your mate and stuff like that is just uh, yeah never mind 
just talk us a little bit about what went wrong. You've had a chance to chat with Georgia. She's obviously pretty inconsolable at the moment. Yeah, really upset. I don't actually know what's happened. What has, has she been eliminated or she has? Yeah, I can't say I agree with that at all because um, I don't know if you know. She has she has been eliminated. She cut well, the short when shoot. When I came onto the second run, I wasn't sure whether I was getting the short shoot because. Um, they said on the commentary when we were coming through on the first lap that me and Georgia had got one. So I was confused thinking, have I got one or she got one? Um, and it wasn't until coming in, Tim Don shouted to me saying that I got two. Um, but I think it's, it's so hard. Like, you listen how, how noisy it is and we've got to rely on someone just shouting to us, telling us that we've got it. When we can hear on the um, microphones that they're saying something different so it's like I don't understand how it's our fault and she's got eliminated so I'm not I'm not best pleased to be honest I think and certainly because she went and did the short shoot again because it wasn't her, like she didn't mean to obviously so um, and then now it, it, it kind of yeah ruins the the, the whole thing. a tough day for Georgia but a brilliant day for you Jess Limot congratulations All right, so strong words and a strong opinion there from Jess Learmonth, and uh, fair enough, look at that. She's sitting on top of the leaderboard now, and it's still three Brits, but the name that we're missing now is Georgia Taylor-Brown, who drops to sixth position with that. Uh, obviously, th there might be an appeal uh, later on, but at the moment, the women's leaderboard is as it looks, with three Brits, and then the two Americans, Katie Zafiris and Taylor Spivey, Georgia Taylor-Brown and Sophie Colwell, are your top seven from the only Perio and Cassandra Brogran, the two French women, and Rachel Klammer rounds out your top 10. So at the moment, Learmonth, Bogran and Holland were your top three. Beth Potter, Leone Perio, Katie Zafir has finished in six from Taylor Spivey, non-Stanford, Sophie Colwell. And Rachel Clam with the top 10 will head back down to Kate. Yes, indeed. We'll definitely be talking plenty more about that women's race as the day progresses. But we do need to now talk about the men's, which is coming up shortly. We've got Tim and Rich to take us through it. But let's first get to those ones to watch. Vincent Lewis was the Munich race winner. The two-time Super League champion looks in control of this game and is the current series leader. He's the master of the longer formats, which puts him as the bookies' favourite heading into Jersey. Third place in London, second in Munich, can Johnny Brownlee step it up to win in Jersey? With two short shoots on offer, he'll need to make sure he claims at least one to avoid a repeat of the Munich finale. Hayden Wilde had a flawless race in London, tactically brilliant for a debut win, but that came crashing down in Munich. Oh, oh well, down, down goes Wilde! He recovered for a fighting fourth, but another hit after the finish means a question mark remains over the Falcons' fitness for Jersey. The Sharks have been the masters of teamwork so far. Reed can deny Vincent Lewis, and he will not want that. The first stage, swim and bike, are going to be hectic. Will the short shoot go to one of the favourites or be tactically taken out of play by a teammate on a mission? I've got to say the Eagles have got a pretty decent team manager because you can hardly keep Tim Don with you for two seconds. He's off there coaching and doing all sorts anyway, Tim. Uh, let's talk a bit about some of these competitors. In fact, no, let's start off by talking about this teamwork. So we've seen a bit of the teamwork from the Sharks. Is it hard to get these individual athletes to let all down for the team? It's not. You know, they've warmed up to the series and they're warming into it. And I just think, you know, they're really enjoying this new concept and they're really embracing it. And I think it, it gives them something else to race for. So, yeah, you're going to see teams working together. All right, we have spoken a lot about uh, Vincent Lewis. Let's talk a little bit, shall we, about Hayden Wilde, which, because we saw him there at the end of that, getting possibly a bit injured. What, what's he been, has he been all right? He fell on the swim and then he also fell on the finish line in Munich. Yeah, so in, Mu in Munich, he took a different line going down to the swim. He actually slipped on some wet grass, landed on concrete, Concrete, I heard, with his knee. So he ended up hurting his knee quite a bit there. And on the run, I think at the end of it, I think he ran across a little bit of pain in his knee. So it looks like that's been a bit of a struggle for him. He came here early. He obviously got some physio work done and stuff as well. And so that apparently has helped things up a little bit. And yeah, it looks like he's been he's been settling in quite well here. Okay, so he's looking good to you. We should talk us in the context of all of this short shoot conundrums uh, about Johnny Brownlee because he really needs to push today for a short shoot after what's happened to him in the last in the last two triathlons. How does he do that, Tim? 
You know, he's got a. I think he can't get the first short shoot. His swimming and transition isn't powerful enough. But coming off the bike, you're going to see a really fast last one kilometer and second transition, so he can try and get it then. That's that could equal it out, but short shoot's a game changer. All right, and uh, Vince as well. He's the guy to beat, and it seems to be favouring those swimmers, doesn't it, here, Rich? Definitely, yeah. I think he is definitely the strongest swimmer. You saw it in Munich. He came from behind, not the swim. He pushed his way all around the outside. It was amazing to see so he's definitely on that section also he's raced here the most as well most experience definitely helps you a lot so yeah I think this is going to be one to watch but we really want to see you know Hayden Wild and Johnny Brownie you know giving giving him the stick all right then we need to get you down to Annie she's on the pontoon with your athletes well, I am just actually waiting for the athletes to come down here. It's stunning out here in the Elizabeth Marina. It really is. The difference between the men and the women's race is the temperature. We were predicted rain. There is none. And it's proving to be really warm. Now, without the rest, that's going to make it pretty tough for the athletes. We saw how important the, the first swim and bike was. We're going to get a little word from Martin Van Riel from Belgium here. Martin, you've seen the women's race. Just how important is it going to be to nail the first swim and bike? Yeah, that's the most important. That's when the, the really big differences usually get made. If you're not in there and from the start, you're lost and, uh, and it gets really tough. So, yeah, the first swim bike is going to be the most important. You were recovering from COVID a couple of weeks ago. You raced last weekend. Not bad, not your best race. You'll be expecting more from yourself here, though, won't you? Yeah, I hope so. It's, it's kind of fun now to try to progress back into my uh, old fitness and yeah I hope to get a step closer here and and improve on that performance. Do you think we are going to be looking at a battle between Vance on Louise again and Johnny Brownlee or are we going to see you and a couple of athletes mixing in with the favorites? Obviously I hope that, that me and, and a couple of others are gonna gonna mix it up uh, but yeah those two are, are legends in the sport and they were super strong last week so great they'll stuff. be up there. Great stuff. Thank you. Have a great one. The race is about to start, so we'll head now to your commentary team. Thanks very much, Annie. I am still recovering from what happened in the women's, and I can confirm from that one that there will be, there has been a dispute, an official one from Georgia Taylor Brown. The race committee will review it after the race. We're not likely to get a, uh, a review or a call on that one before the end of the telecast, but stay tuned. Uh, to all of the social media channels for that. Right now, though, it is about the men's, and it is, again, three triathlons back to back to back. No breaks, 300 metres in the swim, 4Ks on the bike and a 1.6K run. There are two short shoots to be awarded for the fastest athlete in the first swim, plus transition, so the mountain line and the bike in transition. Now, one athlete can win both of them, which is what happened with Jessica Lima. And, uh, of course, the 90-second rule is in effect. We had 10 eliminated in the women's. What will happen in the men's? Who will make it to the first boy first and take that first short shoot? What is really interesting here is that the Eagles have the straightest shot to the first boy. And Taylor Reid just about took it away from Vincent Lewis, the first short shoot back in Munich. If he can do that again, let's see if the rest of his teammates can give him some clear water to make it to that first boy first and perhaps deny Vincent Lewis, who's further out, a short shoot first up. Let's go. We are back into the water in Jersey, and it's always a beautiful sight here in Elizabeth Marina. All of Chris McCormack's boats lined up one after the other on the outside as we head up to the first boy once again. And that, as Annie said, it's gotten a little bit warmer here. Uh, it's just after lunch, and it's a beautiful day. And already the pace is right on in the middle as the arrowhead forms, and it looks like... Well, there's the leaderboard on your left-hand side. You can see Johnny Brownlee and Hayden Wilde locked in a battle for second. And out the front there, I think that's Matt Hauser, who was so strong in the swim uh, last time around before he had a flat tyre in London. And he is in equal first position in the swim jersey points, along with Taylor Reid, with Vincent Lewis one behind. But at the moment, he's a length ahead of everyone. Rich Murray has made his way back into the commentary box. They're really working you hard, Rich, aren't they? Every minute you're in a different position. Same with Annie as well. You can see Vincent Lewis probably moving himself into second position there. And um, is that, oh, it could be Seth Ryder on the inside, but it's Hauser up the front. 
Yeah, that's insane. I think Matt Hauser is definitely, I think everyone, all the athletes have always said that he's got the fastest breakout speed when it comes to the dive in and the and the start in the first 100 meters or so. Uh, I think he's going to get through the boy here. So two scorpions here uh, through rounding the boy. It looks like Vincent Louis getting a bit stuck up here on the boy on the inside. And Martin van Riel, his uh, breathing style, you can see he breathes practically straight up, which is one of the only athletes that does that. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? He's looking at the sky. It's, uh, it's probably something if he was doing that... Um, as an eight-year-old, they, he'd be told that that's not the way to do it. But there you go. Howes has managed to get himself a bit of a gap. Vincent Lewis on the inside. Uh, behind him, I think Hayden Wilde's having a very good swim. Uh, Martin Van Riel, shoulder to shoulder with Lewis in third. Johnny Brownlee back in the middle of that pack in the orange. So, and the, the pace right on already. There's a whole bunch at the back who are seeing the front runners disappear. As they're about to turn left on the second boy. And head back into home, and there it is. So, Vincent Lewis on the inside. There's your championship leader with the French flag on the armband. Two Scorpions, one and two, with Matty Hauser at the front. Yeah, very good question is, will Matt Hauser give up the short shoot to Vincent Lewis if indeed they're going to cross close to each other? That's what teammates do. We've seen Vasco Velasa do similar things to look after Hayden Wild. Or will Matt Hauser get some white line fever and just go for it? Is that the question? Is, is that ma is that match fixing then if Hauser gives up the short shoot? No, That's the question. No, 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 no. Don't That's even say that. Question. Don't even use that term, Richard Murray. It all happens. What are you doing? It all happens here in Super League. That's why we love it. Oh my goodness me! I can tell you, I've just ran up that ramp that the athletes will be heading up very shortly. It is steep and tough, and I tell you what, it's warm out there. Conditions quite different now to the women's race. Well, there we go, Vincent Lewis. He had such an incredible swim after losing around 10 seconds in the bike TT. And no one is anywhere near Vincent Lewis when it comes to speed in the second half of a swim. Matty Hauser was so quick in the first half. No problems with Lewis out of the swim. No problems with Hauser either. Van Riel is in third position. A slip there for Taylor Reid. Seth Ryder comes out. Vasco Velasa comes out. Alessandro Fabian has had a good swim by his lofty standards. But straight out and into short shoot position is Vincent Lewis. And he has a teammate behind him who may well let him do the job. Van Riel and Kenji Nina from the Rhinos are out second too. But Vincent Lewis, well, he could pick up two short shoots if he has a good bike as well. But right now we're in transition. We head in. Hauser, Van Riel, Kenji Nina, Seth Ryder are your top five. Johnny Brownlee as well. But Hauser, is he going to slow down? He is. He is going to slow down for Vincent Lewis. So there you go. The Scorpions working together. And that had been planned, I think. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's interesting to see that. I think it's... Uh, you know, this race is going to be interesting to see whether there might be a breakaway on this one, although the guys usually tend to stay together. And I think you can see Martin van Riel from the Rhinos just coming up behind him here. And there's another Rhino. So it's like two Rhinos t catching two Scorpions at the start of the race. Well, the Rhinos certainly need some points, don't they? That's for sure. But they're pretty strung out at the moment. Vincent Luis doing what he does best. And that is nailing the swim, nailing the transition. He's gone out hard. He'll be aware that there's a little bit of a breakaway. Looks like Martin van Riel. That's good company, isn't it? Because Martin Martin Van Riel can certainly ride a bike. Yeah, and there's Kenji just behind him as well from Japan. He's also, so there's two Scorpions there. But it's going a little wide on the scorn on the way out. Um, but yeah, definitely he's, he's the one to watch on this course. He's done this course many times before. We're working on the graphics. Uh, they're meant to be at the top left of your screen, but I can tell you there's 20 seconds that cover the field after the first swim. Vincent Lewis, Matt Hauser, Martin Van Riel, your top three. We know that. Kenji Nina behind them. Uh, the Japanese grew up in Australia. There's the group of four. And uh, Kenji Nina is getting better and better. And it's after sixth place last weekend. A little bit of gap back to Johnny Brownlee. Taylor Reed's right there. Hayden Wilde is in that group as well. Uh, as is Seth Ryder, Ollie Turner, the local boy from Jersey, who's been a fixture here in previous uh, events. Vasco Velasa, Aaron Royal, Tamas Toth, Yannick Schaufler, Alessandro Fabian in 14th position. Alex Yee was 13 seconds back out of the swim. There is your group of four, though. Mario Mola, who has not figured the three-time world champion at all in Super League racing, really, over the last couple of weeks. And Jake Pertwistle, who again uh, had a tough swim and is back in 18th from Shachar Sagiv. The Israeli who's in the top 10. Josh Lewis as well from the island of Guernsey. And Max Studa was 20 seconds back and last. And through transition they come for the first bike and Van Riel moves to the front. 
confirmation that Vincent Lewis, thanks to Matt Hauser slowing down, is your short shoot winner. A group of four with Johnny Brownlee trying to ride Seth Ryder and Hayden Wild up to that group. And there they are, that group of three, chasing the lead group of four with Vasco Velasa on the front of the chasing pack. Well, I tell you what, Johnny Brownlee did a good job in transition because he really got caught up in some tra 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 traffic in transition. He was late leaving. He's really worked himself incredibly hard to pull something back. He's got Hayden Wall with him. That's great company. Seth Ryder, that would be a pretty amazing bike group out off the front. Yeah, definitely. I think Johnny Johnny is definitely the one that's initiating all the pace here. It'll be interesting to see whether Hayden Wall comes through here uh, perhaps on the next lap or so, but they definitely want to make sure that they, they keep this gap as small as they can and on the run or hopefully on the bike closest gap. Well, I think we can all agree that for the sake of the racing, it would be lovely to see someone who is not Vincent Lewis win the short shoot. At the end of this bike, they have to transition and cross the mountain line like Matt Hauser and Vincent Lewis did. And Johnny Brownlee will know, and there's been plenty of chat this week amongst everyone in the short shoot, uh, in, the, in the short shoot, in the Super League fraternity. I can't stop talking about the short shoot. Um, in the Super League fraternity that Johnny needs a short shoot if he is going to win here at home uh, in Jersey. And he's going to allow Hayden Wild to have a crack on the front, and why not, as they try to bike their way back up as Matt Hauser drops back to that group. And there is Wild, Ryder, and Brownlee. Well, that's good. They've got uh, something to chase now, and good to see that Hayden Wild is taking his turn on the front. You cannot let Vanson Luis get away in this stage in the race. Yeah, it's interesting to see there. I think Matt Hauser is just, you know, he's fallen off there. Looked like they've gone a bit hard, and Hayden Wild to the front here. Uh, on their little chase group. They're probably going to just come around Matt Hazi here before the turn, which is a bit, you know, kind of pushing him out of the way a little bit. He's going to fall back there, unfortunately. But, yeah, you can see the gap there being about 11 seconds odd to the guys chasing them. Very important that this group of three aren't allowed to get away because this is a long, long race. This is discipline number two of nine, and Hayden Wild knows it very well, and he leads that second pack up as they try to tack onto the back and I think they will of uh, Van Riel, Lewis and Kenji Nina and then Alex Yi who had a solid bike last time out in Munich. Uh, he's one of those guys that has come in as a very, very hot runner. Of course, he's a British 10,000 metre national record holder. Uh, he can just turn in a sub 30 10K without too much sweat at all. Um, but he has turned into the complete athlete over the last 12 months or so, and we can see that, obviously, with a haul of a couple of Olympic medals coming out of Tokyo. Van Riel off the front now. Uh, Vincent Lewis, those two train together, of course, uh, in Girona, where Vincent lives with Joel Filiol, so they know each other's bike legs very, very well. What's going on with Matty Hauser? Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised yeah. to see Matty Hauser off the pace like that. Yeah, I think he must be struggling a tiny bit with the bike, the technical bottom. Maybe he's just not 100% on it, but Vasco Velasquez, yeah, really pushing it through wow. this corner. Wow. Love he's, to uh, watch that he, guy ride a bike. He really, he's, he wants to close this gap. He knows he, uh, I can't be off here. I need to really put it down. He's cutting those corners very hard. That That is incredible riding because let's not forget, he must be the youngest guy in the field here racing. He's relatively inexperienced. Yes, he has that medal from the World Championship sprint that was held in 2020, um, but he has little experience at this level of racing in Super League. Yeah, I think Vasco has definitely done super well at the the, the Super League uh, series, the indoor events uh, that they've had recently as well now. And uh, yeah, so he definitely announced himself there. But coming on to the last round of the bike is definitely Matty Hauser falling off the, the chase group here as well. So he's having a tough day. Well, there we have the well, points. Well, there's nothing between them. Look at yeah. that. The points for the swim. Uh, and it's Matt Hauser and Vincent Lewis at the front. And it's going to be basically a chase between the two of them for a cheeky 20 grand when it gets to Malibu uh, in a week's time. Cannot wait for that one. And Johnny Brownlee needs to make sure that it is not Vincent Lewis that picks up that short shoot. And it is not Hayden Wilde that picks up the short shoot. It has to be Johnny Brownlee. And Hayden Wilde will know that he needs it as well. He was very focused on getting it in London. It delivered him a race win. That was two weeks ago, and he will not have forgotten that. It didn't turn out well for him, the Falcon in Munich. And he'll be a little bit upset about that too. So who is going to position themselves correctly? Who is going to have a great transition? And who is going to get that five-second bonus? There's plenty of detractors about the short shoot, but I can tell you that it makes the racing early in a race extremely interesting. 
Yeah, we're, we're... We, we saw, Rich, I was just about to say, we saw you do your, your wonderful race course preview. Watching these guys ride this, they look like to me, they're absolutely hammering it. They're not saving anything. They're, they're taking, well, not risks as such, but they're pretty much on the rivet. They're going as hard as they get, can through this technical course. Yeah, no, they definitely, they've, they've hit these corners so many times, some of these guys as well, especially Hayden Wilde as well. And he's extremely good, te you know, technically through these corners. So he's just getting out the shoes on top that literally took him a second there to get around. Uh, he's coming through here. He really wants the short shoot. He wants to give it to Vince. And, yeah, I think they're uh, coming through. It looks like uh, Seth Ryder busy giving, um, yeah, Hayden a bit of a shot. Oh, oh, oh and they're coming down. There goes Seth Ryder. Hayden Wild manages to avoid that. But his bike's in the wrong hand. He manages to put the back in too. That's going to save him time later on. But those two came rocketing into transition. And we're going to see who can take it out. Vasco Velas is fighting for it. Velas who's going to get it. That was amazing. Is that wow. Vasco Velas who went past? Yeah, yes. that was Vasco yeah. Velas. It was. Came through, yeah. well, it's well he, just, he just took it from, the, I think, uh, Modern Fun Real there. It, it, can I put my hand up here? I, I think that was a little bit of argy bargy from Hayden Wilde coming through transition there. His bike went and he sort of ran into to Seth Ryder. Yeah, I think it's hard just to, you know, it's, when you're running with your bike, your bike bounces everywhere. So, you know, you can't really, you can blame it on your shoes, on your bike. But I think it was, you Let's know, it was, it. he literally, he was going for the line here. Yeah, and I think they jumped off, but his bike must have bounced. He, his bike bounced and then he moved to the side and by accidentally bumped Seth out the way. I don't think that was intentional at all. No. Well, Ryder will consider himself probably a little hard done by on that one. He didn't get given much room. Let's have another look at it from this angle. So Ryder came out to the right-hand side and across, well, it was Hayden Wilde's fault. He just had a little stumble, I think, and then ran into Ryder, but he managed to hold his bike. Ryder did not. Lewis got caught up in it as well, and then it came down. And how good did Ryder end up to, uh, to pick his bike up and come out third, but Vasco Velasa was the uh, great beneficiary of the entire thing and suddenly it's Velasa and Kenji Nina who are leading. And that's how much these athletes want it. That's how much they know the importance of the short shoot of getting out of transition quick. Uh, and it's all happening here in Jersey. The question now, and it's a little bit, I guess, like, you know, in a Tour de France or, or suddenly Rasco Velasco is a guy who's been working for Hayden Wild, and now he finds himself at the front of a race. And at this point, he goes, well, I'm not working for Hayden Wild anymore. I'm working for Vasco Velasa. He's a guy who absolutely loves this race. He lives for it. He's delivered Hayden Wild a couple of uh, key moments. Uh, his fellow Sharks man, who's now at the back of this train of athletes where Ryder and Alex G is trying to run up, the uh, the fastest runner, you would say. He's running a 2.39 pace last week while putting his goggles and swim cap on, which is just incredible. But Velasa is now, he's having his turn at the front and his turn in the spotlight, and as is Kenji Nina, who has just improved so much over the course of the last couple of weeks. Johnny Brownlee looks back, he's discussing things with Martin Van Riel, but also checking to see where his main title rivals are in Vincent Lewis and Hayden Wild, and he'll be disappointed to see that they're both tacked onto the back of this group. I had a, a good little chat with uh, Johnny Brownlee at breakfast this morning, and, and I said, how are you feeling? And he said, I'm feeling good, a bit nervous, because I really want this one. I'm really excited about it. And I think that this is a format that really suits Johnny. But this group together, they are going to work hard. They're going to make every single one of these six athletes give 100% in this race. Yeah, I think you can see also Kenji Nina coming up on the side here. If no one knows about it, Vincent Louis actually gave Kenji Nina a saddle because his saddle broke in Munich and they duct taped his saddle together and he rode the, the bike ride with his bike duct taped on the, onto the seat post. So, you know, there's a nice rivalry going in here, but it's, you know, they still help each other out, which is great to see. Absolutely right. Now, you know, a lot of familiar faces here and Johnny Brownlee, Vincent Lewis, Alex Yee has run his way back up to this pack. Seth Ryder is behind them. Uh, further back, Alessandra Fabian, Taylor Reed, you can see in the back. But Kenji Nina is a guy who, you know, some people might not know as much about. Uh, he's been racing for Japan since 2017. He became a citizen of Japan earlier uh, this year. But prior to that, grew up racing uh, in Australia, grew up in Perth. And he's had a really big breakthrough uh, 12 months, of course, at that World Cup in Calavivari. He was, he was with Vincent Lewis in T2, ended up having a crash in the tunnel there. And then, of course, finished 14th in the mixed, uh, in the individual in Tokyo. One spot behind Vince, and he's one spot behind Vince right now. As is Martin Van Riel, Hayden Wild, Alex Yee, who's covered the gap, and Velasa, who's moved to the back of this group now. And 
and back in the bat, Toby Oscreen, the two Aussies, and Bert Whistle and Royal, and Marco van der Stel, who are back again. Yeah, and you actually see Alex Yee popped in through the back there. He came out, he came through the back there, and uh, yeah, he was quite a bit off, so he really pushed that lap to try and get onto the back of these guys. They're all putting their caps and goggles on now, the cream of the crop coming to the front here. Uh, you know, Johnny Brownlee in the front, then, uh, you know, Vince right behind him, and, and I think Hayden, you're going to see coming on the left here as well, just to get his get himself up here before they dive in. I think well, Alex... Seth Ryder, part of, sorry, Annie, part no, of why... Part of why Seth Ryder came in hammering so hard is because he knows there's 20,000 points for that bike overall jersey, and he's taken some of those points too. So that's uh, very smart racing from him. I think Alex Yee has had an absolutely outstanding run, I really do. And I think that confidence he got from that third place finish in Munich last week has made him really hungry for more success. He says himself he's still learning about this style of racing. It's his first full season in Super League and he's proving that that silver medal he won in Tokyo was so much deserved, such a talented athlete. But it's uh, Hayden Wild from New Zealand who's pushing the pace out now as the athletes head back to their boxes and their bikes and just prep for the Shoes in the box there before they head out on the swim. You can see there Johnny Brownlee had three pairs of shoes, just like Jess Learmont did. Hayden Wild had multiple pairs of shoes as well, but not all of them do, which means, of course, you've got to place those shoes if you've just got the one pair uh, in the right spot, so it's easy to pick them up again. Otherwise, just chuck them in the box and get another pair. Uh, Seth Ryder loses sight of this group of seven. One and a half seconds covering them as they went through there. And Nina at the back as they head down the ramp into the water for the second time. It is Hayden Wild, Martin Van Riel, Johnny Brownlee, Vincent Lewis, Alex G, Kenji Nina and Vasco Velasa. All names that we've spoken about as front runners dur during this $1.25 million month of short course racing. Into the water again. And as he does, Vincent Lewis makes sure that he is the first into the water because he knows he's the quickest swimmer and he doesn't want to have to swim around anybody. He wants to stretch them out. Richard, tell me what this moment feels like in the water because you are already a swim, bike, run, sprint into the race. You dive into the water. Physiologically, what is going on? What are you feeling? Yeah, so I think it depends on what part you are in the swim. If you're somebody who's just behind you, you want to kind of dive in, get on the slipstream as quick as you can. You see Hayden Wild in a perfect position here uh, on Vince's hip. I think hips, uh, Vince Louis is not going to enjoy that all that much. It's horrible when someone swims around on your hip. They kind of suck you down in the water. So uh, Vince definitely is going to be starts you know pushing it on here with Johnny on the outside I think Vasco Velasha here you're right in the middle of the mix here in the in, in the washing machine and yeah I think they're all going to try and stay together it's going to be interesting to see with um you know if Alex uh, Alex Yee manages to hang on here because you know the, the the not stronger swimmers obviously or the weaker swimmers definitely you know gets tougher towards the second part of the swim where you can see Vincent Louis here just busy you know stretching it out he's definitely great you know stronger on the second section of the swim good to watch Johnny Brownlee's skill here because he's found the feet hasn't he? he's found that sweet spot exactly where he needs to be and he's getting a nice draft now off Vincent yeah I think Johnny's definitely you know riding the Vincent Louis wave here which is which is definitely enjoyable and a, and a nice thing to do I can't say I've enjoyed it myself that all that all that much but it's definitely you know a great place to be on it's it's really interesting actually because Hayden Wilde got and, and by his own admission got swum over the top of by Johnny as they chased Vincent's feet back in London and the same thing has happened here at where the two of them have been behind Vincent Lewis and Johnny has just been the one who has been a little bit more aggressive in making sure he found the feet of the Frenchman. And again, Hayden Wilde finds himself relegated to third position in the swim. And there they are, your top three in the championship, your top three in this race as we are midway through the fourth of nine disciplines into the harbour for the second time. And it's amazing to see how Hayden Wilde improved his swim so much. If you look back to, you know, three years ago, he was one getting dropped kind of in the swim, and now he's, he's holding his best with hanging on Johnny's feet here. So definitely goes to show over the years he's improved. Yeah, I think Hayden Wilde's uh, swim is much improved. Even, even this season and the last handful of races I've seen in Super League, I think those shorter distances, he obviously stays on a, a lot better. And we can see now the run leader, Hayden Wilde, up there with 13 points. Vincent Luis and Johnny Brownlee in third, Yi in fifth. And Pasco Velarcho, who's having a fantastic 2021 uh, Super League season. 
The eliminations are going to start coming in thick and fast at the at the back end of this field. Marco van der Stel's over a minute back and he is going to start feeling like he's in a little bit of danger soon enough. Josh Lewis, I think, has dropped out. We'll get confirmation on that very soon. Hayden Wild picked up the fastest run split in the last run. A couple of seconds faster than anybody else. He had to work his way through a bit of traffic as Lewis again comes out of the water first. He's got a short shoot in the back pocket. Out comes Johnny Brownlee. Out comes Hayden Wild, Martin Van Riel, Kenji Nina, Vasco Velasa. And a good swim there from Seth Ryder to make sure that he joins this group. He's really made some time up there, Ryder. Great addition to this series. And Yee comes in a couple of seconds back. Yeah, I think Yee's definitely got his got his work cut out for him. Yeah, he's going to be just off with Ryder. Luckily, Seth Ryder's a pretty strong cyclist, and yeah, you'll hopefully luckily see them coming back into the mix here. So 11 seconds covering the top eight. And yeah, Alex Yee, after a podium position last week, needs to back it up this week with a good one and the pace at the front is hot on goes the phoenix helmet of azon lewis and out comes brownlee and lewis the brit and the frenchman with the kiwi right behind no one's been able to touch these three over the last couple of weeks martin van Riel tucks in behind of course he missed london came back in munich he was unwell and came back after that for a very credible seventh position. And Brownlee takes his turn at the front. Wild tucks in behind as they head out on a 4K bike. It's interesting, to see, how, interesting to see how these small little gaps out the swim actually materialise into a bigger a bigger gap here. And Alex, Alex Yee has definitely had a great transition there to, to move up a few spots. So Seth Ryder's bike was getting some work done on it uh, after that accident coming into transition and I'm hearing that he might not have a front brake so he had a go at it pulled it right back to the bar there's no front brake on the bike just don't slow down uh, Seth just keep going mate I think you how we do it here you would rather have a front rather have a front brake than a back brake in this race <laughs> yeah uh, the wheels <laughs> lock up very quickly with these disc brakes if you just grab a handful of back brake so yeah hopefully he's uh, he's gonna stay in the mixer but you see see him go around this corner with just a back brake well the athletes so, getting a little bit strung out aren't they will there and they're all Johnny Brownlee on the front absolutely busting a gut to try and pull away a little bit he'll be aware that Alex G has dropped off as has Vasco Velaza but we know what Vasco Velaza is capable on the bike he's got Seth Ryder with uh, apparently no brakes on the front on his wheel yeah, you don't want to slow I love down this yet. racing. <laughs> I love Super League racing. It is, it. There's never a dull moment. There's always something happening. Johnny Brownlee at the front, and he's putting down a serious pace. And now there's a group of five with a couple of gaps back, and rocketing around the back is Alex Yee's on his own, and then Vasco Velasa coming around that final turn, looking like Valentino Rossi laying it halfway down in his haste to try and make those gaps back up. Still, the graphics are down, but there is seven seconds covering the front eight, and then a very big gap back as they come through transition. I'll update you again on the times, but you can see there's no one else back there. And it's a race of eight at the moment, and this time it's Hayden Wild who turns into the top end of the course in first position. Ye lonely there in sixth, with Ryder and Velasa behind. Yeah, difficult place for Seth uh, Ryder to be in. He's just doing up his Velcro, but I think he's probably hanging around for uh, for the last. We had a bit of a scratch there. I don't think it was a bike. I think it hopefully was a yes. It was a motorbike. It, was it wasn't a, a bike going down. <laughs> Seth Ryder is safe with no brakes on the front. It's Hayden Wild from New Zealand though that is really pushing this pace. Now be really aware they will have got a chance back in transition when they did that 180 degrees. That Velasa and Yi have dropped off the pace just a little bit. It's only a few seconds but it could make the difference between them staying on and not staying on. They'd very much like to get into the last section of this race, the swim, bike and run. Of course, they've got to run after this bike, but without Alex G and Velaza, who are two great runners.
Yeah, I think you see, saw Seth Ryder at the back there. He was, I'm not sure if he's made up a tiny bit of time there a little bit, but it looks like he's definitely gunning for it. And I think Hayden Wilde coming through here, really cutting low through these corners. And it's great to see Martin Van Riel here as well. He had a tough race last weekend after getting, you know, getting, getting the virus. And so it's great to see him back in the mix. Let's not forget that Vasco Velasca is the owner of the second short shoot, so he really needs to stay within five seconds of this front group. Otherwise, Vincent Lewis is the only man who has that short shoot in his back pocket out of this front group of five. So he'll be very happy, Vincent Lewis, that the pace is nice and high. And two laps to go in this second bike. So we are officially halfway through this race, and we'll head down to Kate, who's with... Josh Lewis from the island of Guernsey, which is just over the water. He's been eliminated from this race. He has indeed been, Josh. Well done and commiserations. He had a bit of a run in with the, the shoes set up, as I understand it. Yeah. Um, just, uh, you know, I haven't done this event many times at all. It's my second time ever. And I've only just got on the hang of normal transitions, let alone Super League transitions. So, yeah, was, I got a bit of a, a mix up and just carried on with my shoes accidentally. Caught swimming shoes. <laughs> and in the end, you were eliminated. But the crowd were absolutely loving it. So, congratulations on racing here, Josh. Thank you very much. Cheers. Down in the BOA Endure Recovery Zone is Josh Lewis, and he'll be needing to do that it, recover, as uh, you can see there. One minute back is Shachar Sagiv and Mario Mola, and tacking onto the back is Vasco Velasa and Seth Ryder. So we are back together again, just about, so the moral which is great news for the racing, great news for the fans. Yeah, so the moral of the story is you, know, you don't need brakes to go fast. That seems, that seems what it looks like. Hopefully uh, Seth stays upright through this piece, but that's definitely risky business going with no front brake through this. Oh, my goodness. Johnny Brownlee is doing a lot of the work, isn't he? And now if I was Johnny Brownlee, knowing that these guys have got back on now, I might just like sit back a little bit because I think he did the sensible thing to try and stay away, get that little group of four or five off the front. It hasn't materialised. Velasa and Yi and, uh, and, and Seth Ryder from the US are back in contention now. So it's time perhaps for Johnny to sit up and sit. I'm talking as a manager here. <laughs> to sit up and, and wait for the final run in this stage. Yeah, I don't know about I don't know about you, but the Brown, the Brownleys are definitely not ones to wait around. No, they're, they're really not. Nah, That's a stupid thing to say. No, I don't say stupid, but <laughs> yeah, I definitely think Johnny, you know, uh, you know, he's he's a smart race, he'll know what to do, yeah. And they do have quite a big of a gap towards the guys, so you know, you actually might have nailed this. Everybody grabbed the water bottle, so actually you were bang on. I think that's uh, you got it right right there. So big gaps now back behind this group of eight who've come back together thanks to huge efforts from Vasco Velasa, Seth Ryder. And at the at the front now is Kenji Nina with Johnny Brownlee tucked in ahead of Martin Van Riel. And no one else on my timing screens has crossed the uh, the, trans the, the transition timing mat yet. So I can a say, big gap Will, as wide we've, goes Ryder. we've got 41 seconds, ninth position. That is Reed from uh, New Zealand. Alessandro Fabian in 11th place, 51 seconds back. Uh, very dangerous position to be in. We're only sort of halfway through, aren't we? And they are heading towards that one minute and uh, that nasty little 90 second elimination point if they're not careful. Yeah, no, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's great to see all the guys together. There's nothing better than seeing, you know, eight athletes or seven athletes together, you know, going for it. And, and it almost, you know, opens up that excitement of, you know, who's going to take this, you know? Is it going to be Vincent Louis? Is it going to be, you know, uh, Johnny Brownlee? Might, might it be Kenji Nana? Who, who, who knows? Jake Burt Whistle, who we, well, our sports forecast predictions were that he would be right up the pointy end during all of this, is currently seven seconds from being eliminated, the Australian. Behind Oliver Turner of Jersey, Mario Mola is close to, he's past the one minute mark. As Kenji Nina hops out of the shoes and they come rocketing into transition again. Clean this time it looks like, although somebody's down in the back. Was somebody down in the back? I saw a bike flying into the air. I think it's all clean now. There was Seth Ryder's bike going up in the air again. Looks like his bike's got a mind of its own. So Johnny, <laughs> Johnny going out to the front, yeah? It certainly seems to. That's what happens when you don't have a front brake. And it's Vincent Lewis who's at the back this time. As they head out into the second run. Brownlee, Nina, Wild, Van Riel. 
And Johnny needs to have a monster run here. Let's have a look at what happened here. And there is Ken, oh, that, that's Seth Ryder's bike just pops up in the air and it held up Vincent Lewis, who was behind him, and Alex Yee. So Seth Ryder, the old aqua two-wheeler, flying all over the shop. Love it. Well, it was uh, Kenji Nina who flew out of transition. Actually, it was Johnny Brownlee who got in front of him and a super smooth uh, transition from uh, Johnny Brownlee. But Vanson Luis, really the casualty there of that mistake uh, from Seth Ryder. Yeah, sometimes they might struggle with the shoes sometimes as well. So it's, yeah, the shoes are very tricky to get into sometimes. But so we are at the point here. And yeah, it looks like Vince has got some work to do here, actually. I mean, this is this is not this is not his usual position. Annie, what do you, well, what do you think point, about this? Well, at this point, at this point in the course, at this point in the course, Hayden Wild and Johnny Brown, they get a look at where Vincent Lewis is. This is the point where you find out exactly how far back he is. And there he is there. And they go, OK, we've got to go. We've got to go. If we're going to put points back into the championship leader, we're going to go now. We're going to swim, bike and run to go. He's the best swimmer. And there are the two men who are going to challenge him when it comes to Malibu. Because Martin Van Riel missed the first race. Kenji Nina had a tough race first out. And there are the three men at the back end of this thing. Vasco Velasa, as we see there, has a short shoot. Vincent Lewis has one as well. But they're both more than five seconds back on the leaders. This is strange stuff, I have to say, guys, because it is not normal for Vincent Luis, who's looking so, so strong, um, has a short shoe. He's in a brilliant position, but he finds himself 50, 60, 70 metres down the road from these guys. Hayden Wild is really, really pushing the pace. Johnny Brownlee sitting on his shoulder there. This is not what we expected to see. Yeah, this is very. This is a very different take that we thought coming off that transition, maybe... Maybe maybe Vince is you know having a bit of a struggle. Uh, maybe he's a bit tired. Perhaps you, you never really know what's going on. You um, it could be a bit under the weather. You don't know. But yeah, as you see the the two rhinos finally having a, having a good showing here. You know, uh, it's great to see them up in the mix. They definitely you know they need some points. That's for sure. Well, there's no eagles up the front, which could mean uh, a little bit when it comes to the team points after this. But forgetting all of that, Seth Ryder and uh, Alex Yee are, are the two eagles in the top eight. But at the moment, it's a shark from a cheater and a couple of rhinos chasing them down, which extremely incorrect when it comes to the natural world. But in Super League, that's exactly what's happening. This is not the normal world, Will. You should know that by now. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. You are exactly right. It's 12 and a half seconds back to Vincent Lewis all of a sudden. So whether he's had some issue there more than just what happened with the bike, and then maybe a bit tardy with the shoes is uh, is a question. But he's not dropping Seth Ryder, and he's not running his way back. Of course, Vasco Velasco, a fantastic runner in his own right. But he's 13 seconds in arrears. So what we have right now is the front of the race where no one has a short shoot. Everyone is uh, on equal footing. And at the moment, it's Hayden Wilde and Johnny Brownlee who are setting the pace, have dropped the other two rhinos, or at least put an extra 10 or 12 feet into them as we've headed out over the last three or four hundred meters alex Yee's going to run up to them i think hayden, the, the complexion of this race is changing so rapidly yeah i think hayden wild knows i mean he looked across there and he put the hammer down and put a tiny bit of a surge into johnny i think he knows this is the moment if i want to win this now is the time and on with the swim cap the goggles are around the neck he really looks like a professional swimmer here almost with the goggles around the neck and yeah he's getting into his stride he's definitely you know improving improving you know race on race and i think he really wants this it is just so great to see hayden ward it's the new generation isn't it? he's still a really young guy a really young athlete had got that bronze medal in the olympics having been locked down in new zealand for for many many months i think what i love to see about hayden ward is just how much he loves his racing and particular particularly super league johnny brownlee just sort of dropping off the pace slightly he won't be too worried about that he knows he's the stronger swimmer but he doesn't want that gap to widen any longer he has martin van riel from belgium trying to run him down he could definitely work with uh, johnny brownlee but i thought it was going to be about hayden wild and johnny brownlee but johnny brownlee not able to go with the pace at the moment of the uh, new zealand athlete he could swim back up to him though that is a question and we'll also see what can happen when it comes to vincent lewis's swim but we don't see he hasn't, he hasn't crossed he hasn't come around the final corner yet down go the shoes of hayden wild into the box go the shoes of johnny brownlee he's got a spare pair there 
And out they go. So I would say that Johnny probably has a couple of seconds on Hayden in the water, but when it comes to the third swim of a triathlon, really anything can happen. And yeah, Vincent Louis definitely is, you know, he, he's one to show when it comes in the swim. He can really close again. He threw his shoes down here, pocketed around. He doesn't look like he's overly, you know, he doesn't look like he's in his stride. You know, I don't like to call things too early, but, you know, Vince definitely looks like he's slightly off. Yeah, he doesn't look injured. He doesn't look like he's hobbling or there's anything untoward, but the urgency is almost gone a little bit. Yeah, I think, you know, when it comes down to the swim, though, I think Vince is a fish, but I think you really have to you have to want this. And I think Hayden knows he's got his work, his work cut out for him here. He's got uh, some sharks in, in the form of cheetahs behind him coming up. And, uh, yeah, there's the rhinos coming into the water. I don't know how rhinos swim. Um, well, what do you think about that? Well, we're going to find out in a minute. Uh, probably not awesome, but we'll, <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. Alex Yee's done well to tack himself onto the back of that group, so he's going to have... A nice little pull as they come. Uh, well, but already that uh, that run gap that Hayden Wild managed to eke out, which was three seconds, has evaporated completely. There is a couple of cheaters. In Thomas Toth and Aaron Royal. Jake Burt Whistle managed to make it over within the 90 seconds. There is three-time world champion Mario Mola. I felt like we haven't seen it all. And eliminated is Shatsha Sagiv and Jake Burt Whistle. So I thought they'd made it out, but there is the mount line and Jake Burt Whistle, who won back in Hamilton Island in 2017, who is a fantastic runner, who's rated up there at the top of all the disciplines has seen his day end early. And at the front, the Rhinos, well, they've swum up. And again, it's these two fighting each other for position in the water. This time it's Hayden Wild on the outside, Johnny Brownlee on the inside, but they're close enough to kiss each other. And meanwhile, <laughs> on the inside of both of them is a Rhino. I'm just watching them, they're all lined up in four, and there's little Alex Yee on their feet. I mean, what a remarkable race from Alex Yee. You know, I think for me, the maturity and that desire to win and the grit to stay on when he could give up, because this is tough racing for him with a slightly weaker swim. He's very lean, the water's cold, there's no wetsuit. But Alex Yee, once again, proving why he won that silver medal in the Olympics. Yeah, so Hayden's, Hayden's swimming without goggles here again. I think he maybe he might have opted here to have no goggles to see better in the salt water. What do you think about that, Walt? <laughs> Why would you ever do that? Last time it was the shark of Vasco Velasa who had his goggles come off. This we're going to talk to Michelle Dillon and ask her what she's talking about with the sharks not wearing goggles. That's a, that's a, that's a fresh question. The Look how far back the rest of the field is there at the top of your screen. The question is, have you ever seen a shark swimming with goggles on? That's the question. You pose the tough questions, Richard Murray. That's why we have you in the commentary box. I'm just watching uh, what is, I believe, uh, Vincent Luis and Seth Ryder. They do appear to be pulling back a little bit of time. When you're a strong swimmer and you've got something to chase, it, it, it makes it slightly easier. It definitely looks to me like Vincent Luis is pulling a little bit back because he was way down. They were in the water by the time he was just entering the ramp. Yeah, I think when you get onto the... He was 24 last... seconds down, Annie. He was 24 seconds adrift of Hayden Wild going into the water. So after that first part of the run, he was 13 seconds. The second lap, he lost another nine or 11 seconds, sorry. And then so something was happening with his run. We know he's had an ankle injury in the past. That's what cruelly his shot at Olympic gold. But at the moment, the Rhinos are in the lead. Who would have thought it? And Kenji yeah. Nina. Look at this swim. Leading look, this race. Look, look at this swim from Van Son Luis. 24 seconds down in 300 metres. He looks like he's virtually made it up. I think he's pulled up here. I think it's Martin Van Riel that's in the front here. Well, not uh, oh, Kenji, sorry, you're but right. that's all right. Yeah, I think Vince, you so look at this. And then they, yeah. Wow. Vince has pulled back at least 15 seconds on in this swim. He got back into the group here. Oh, and he's wow. Well. Oh, wow. wow. That is impressive. Well, we're all saying, well, we've got no other words for it, but he was 24 seconds down going down the cheese grater. And by the time they go back up, he's about five seconds down. There you go. Well, 8.6 coming out of the swim. So Van Real from Johnny Brownlee, Kenji Nina, Hayden Wild, Alex Yee. We've got a bike and a run left. And there is your championship leader in the back, Vincent Lewis. He has a short shoot. Behind him, Vasco Velasa. He has a short shoot. 
And behind them both is Seth Ryder, 12 seconds in arrears. It's going to be cool to see if Fitz gets back onto this group here. He's just coming in here. The guys are getting on their bike. He's going to have a monster bike to get back on. Well, he's well, going to need it. But if anyone can do it, Vance on Luis can. He looks like he's kind of got his mojo back now, doesn't he? He's got on early. We've seen all the athletes get on after that 180 degree turn. He leapt on halfway round. That's a very good call, actually. He jumped on his shoes, weren't spinning by the time. So perhaps when the shoes aren't elastic banding, you can jump on earlier and get straight onto the shoes. But I think you see uh, Martin Monreal looking back. Where is Vincent? Is what he's probably thinking. That's what we all ask, or they all ask anyway, uh, at all times of any race. Where is Vincent Lewis? And pushing hard and big watts at the front is Martin Van Riel. Sitting behind him is Hayden Wild. I think it's difficult. Johnny Brownlee in fourth. Uh, uh, what a wonderful race these guys are delivering us for, de for us today because, you know, sometimes it can get a little bit dull when you've got an athlete out in front. Not dull, but predictable. But there's nothing predictable about this race because in every single stage we have seen it changing, all sorts of things happening. Uh, and what a wonderful race that Jersey has delivered here today. And Vince is, Vince is giving it the beans here. He really wants to get onto the back here. Uh, he knows that this is the crunch point. As soon as he gets onto the back, He'll be able to take, put his feet back in the shoes. One foot is still on top of the shoe. Yeah, he doesn't even have time to get his feet in. Right, we're going to head down to Kate. She's with uh, Jake Burt. Was so right now was eliminated uh, in the previous discipline. All right, bad luck, Jake. Thanks for stopping to talk to us. How, how are you feeling about your three performances in general in Sydney Triathlon? Um, yeah, it was a, obviously a pretty tough day. Uh, I had a hard time out there, kind of just getting up to speed. Uh, and a, an event like this, you can't really uh, be having an off day, I guess. So I've, uh, it's the first time I've been eliminated. It's a little bit embarrassing, but I feel like I've experienced all of Super League now. I've been at the top, and now I've, uh, I've been at the bottom as well. So uh, I guess it's kind of part of it. Um, and we'll move on and hopefully have a bit better race next week. All right, put it behind you. We'll see you in Malibu. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Uh, the swings and roundabouts of Super League racing. You can be at the top, you can be at the bottom, and in the back screen there is Vincent Lewis trying his hardest to get back onto this group of five, and if he does, he will blow this thing wide open. Hayden Wild knows it, and he's going to get another look at where Vincent Lewis is. In just a second, your other short shoot, get up, is in the back of screen there to Vasco Velasa, but the man figuring is Vincent Lewis. He was nine seconds back coming out of the water. He's 3.6 seconds back after the first lap. You'd say he's going to get on. But yeah, until you're on, you're not on. That's the thing. Yeah, I think Hayden Wild knew that and he realized and he went to the front and he saw the guys were kind of probably easing up a little bit and thought, no, listen here, mate, if I want to win this, I've got to go for it now. And we got a good glimpse of Vance on Luis's face. He didn't look happy. He looked like he was hurting. And as you said, you know, for the viewers, sometimes you're looking on thinking, no, there's 10 meters, get on. But when you've got the likes of Hayden Wild on the front, it's very, very difficult. We can see there him just exhaling. I think he knows he's going to have to wait for the guys behind him. He does have Vasco Velarza. He does have Alex Shee behind him. Um, so there's a chance that they can work together but it's looking pretty tough for the Frenchman Running at the moment. Running out of time, though, you would have thought. Well, absolutely, Running yeah. out of time. Yeah. And, I mean, he's still How got that short goes. shoot. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's very... I mean, he was so close. He was three seconds, and he probably really needed to dig into the red, but he was probably in the red just to get those seconds back. And now you can see it blowing out now immediately, as you said, Annie. Those three seconds have probably gone on to five, six seconds by now already. Maybe that is his chance missed because, yeah, he put everything in. He obviously had a huge swim. He said it took it out of him massively uh, last week to swim back on. It was three seconds. It's now more like eight uh, as they head back onto the black carpet. We'll see exactly what the times are. Yeah, that's definitely blown out a little bit there. And Oreo Mola busy giving some uh, words of encouragement here, former uh, three times world champion three times world champion. What an athlete he, he is. But I think he's never found Super League racing. I don't want to say easy because no one finds it easy, but he hasn't quite got into it. He's struggled, hasn't he, over these formats? Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult. You know, it's, uh, it is uh, it is definitely the, the young crew coming through. You know, I mean, definitely the likes of Alex E and Hayden Wild. They're definitely, you know, they're 24 years old or something. So they're definitely the young the young guns, you know, pushing through here. And uh, it's great to see Kenji on the front. He's had some, he's had, I think, two crashes, a puncture and a crash or something. So he's definitely good to see him back in the race and uh, pushing up near the front. He's a really, really a nice guy. Really enjoying the racing of Kenji Nina as well, who... He was in the front pack for most of 
the swim bike run, swim bike run last week. And he's having plenty more of a taste of success here on the streets of Jersey because he hasn't raced here before. And no one's got a short shoot. Johnny Brownlee's done it. No one's yeah, got, no a one's short got a shoot, shoot in the front group here. So the two short shoots are at the back here with Vasco Velasco and uh, Vincent Louis just taking a look here at those guys, seeing them push through. And he's definitely in a tough place. Uh, Kenji uh, pushing it on the front. It's not very often you see a guy from Japan here on the front of the Super League, so this is the first time we've ever seen this. This is when the short shoot really comes into its own because both of them know that they've still got a hand to play in this race and Lewis and Velasco, if they can stay in touch. And the guys at the front know that the guys behind them have it and they are pushing very, very hard. It's no, it's not a race in five, not at all. I, and at the moment, it's Nina and Van Riel, the Rhinos at the front. What a race from Alex Yi, though. We have, and the bell goes for the final lap. Alex Yi just sitting in there quietly, getting a nice little ride round. Won't say it'll be easy, but he's not taking his turn, being very smart. Now, that third group there has been towed along by Ryder. Ryder has done a magnificent effort to pull Malaza and Luis back up. And remember, I think Vin, I think uh, he also doesn't have a front break, if we're not mistaken. So we all forgot about that. Um, on the front of the group, he's doing a bit of a Matteo van der Poel where he broke his handlebar and just uh, rode on the front of the group saying, you know, I don't need a break, but I'll take my pull and give my good all in there. <laughs> there is going to be a change of championship leader, perhaps. We will find out in about six minutes' time. The Rhinos oh, also could overtake the Cheetahs if they have a decent result here, which would be good for everyone except for Annie. Steady, steady, steady. Yeah, I'm steady a big well. fan of the Rhino, so yeah, I'm definitely going to, you know, I'm always the underdog. Also, Rachel's a Rhino, so you've got to give it to them. Go, Rhino! Huge, huge Rhino right fans. I've got Johnny huge Brownlee in fans. there. I'm backing Johnny Brownlee. <laughs> Well, we could see a, uh, a British victory here, and we've seen plenty of them, but we haven't seen Alex Yee or Johnny Brownlee stand on the top step. And at the moment, you'd have to say that three of these five men uh, look good for a podium. Who it's going to be is anybody's guess. You definitely think Alex Yee, probably the fastest runner. Johnny Brownlee, very close by as well. And there's 1.6 Ks. And off the back of that group is Vincent Lewis. Where is Vincent Lewis? He's dropped off the back of those two chasers. He might have had a bit of a problem there on the corners because he was with them when they hit that corner, so he might have had a bit of a slip up there. Uh, Hayden Wild getting oh. out the shoes here. Uh, it's going to be awesome to see Whoa. Hayden Wild versus uh, Alex. Johnny Brownlee letting himself get a little bit far back coming into transition here. Really needs to be a little bit further up. Look at Hayden Wild, though. He's really hungry, as in Martin Van Riel. But I think the guy to watch here is going to have to be Alex Yee. He's a sub 28 minute 10K runner on the track. Pretty hard to beat over this sort of distance. But he's dropping his shoe now. Problem with his shoe. Yeah. yeah. So it's Hayden Wild, Martin Van Riel, Johnny Brownlee. Alex Yee has work to do now. Vincent Lewis comes into transition behind Velasa and Ryder. There is your championship leader. Seeing his chances slip away. He's having trouble with the shoe as well. He hasn't had a race he would like. Vincent Lewis, the short shoot's not going to help him from back there. He's all by himself. I think to the finish, the short shoot might help him, but it depends. It might be something off. I mean... If he's had a struggle with his shoe, getting his getting his getting his shoe on, and apparently, yeah, he might have an issue with his right shoe or getting his shoe on you. Yeah. Certainly, the run where he lost time last time. It's difficult to see what's going on there, but the shoes didn't look like they were actually on properly. But I can't see how they weren't. Hayden Wall out in front, though. Martin Van Riel, hungry for success here. He wanted to be on the podium last week. He didn't quite make it. Johnny Brownlee just slightly dropping off. And it looks like we've lost uh, Kenji Nina now, but a great performance from the Japanese athlete. And Martin Van Riel up in here and get on the podium. I think that's going to be one of the, I mean, I think the second time he's going to be on a, on a, on a, on a Super League podium. So, yeah, definitely uh, Hayden Wild pushing hard up at the front, getting away from them. And Vasco Velasco. Yeah, Hayden Wild picked up the, uh, the fastest split as well uh, of the day in the run. And it was in stage two, and it was a 2.41 pace. But the two men who were with him with a 2.43 pace were Martin Van Riel and Johnny Brownlee, so not too far off. But there is your championship leader and a man who's won the last two, two trips to Jersey. Vincent Lewis will get the post-mortem. We'll find out what the problem is. Uh, but Yi has managed to overtake Kenji Nina and he's looking to get on his second straight podium.
Alex Yi, he's in fourth position. There are the gaps. On the left of your screen is Wild, then Brownlee, then Van Reel, and Alex Yi running up into a podium position, potentially one more lap after this. So we have about 1K to go. They're going to take a left-hand turn back onto the black carpet. And it's Hayden Wild, who won in London, looking to do the same thing after disappointment in Munich. Well, disappointment, he finished fourth. To take another one and take the championship lead. He's on 27 points. Johnny Brownlee's on 27 points. And the only man in front of them is Vincent Lewis on 29. And he is out of this race. Well, for me, Hayden's gone off a little bit quick. Johnny Brownlee is an athlete that will settle in nicely. Alex Shee comes from behind. Martin Van Riel tends to go off a bit hard. At the moment, Hayden Ward looking incredibly strong, but has he gone a bit early, Rich? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, you can see by his facial expressions, he's not gritting the teeth like he was in London, but look at Alex Yee coming at the back and he's pushing through. So I want to see if Alex Yee makes, uh, you know, the change uh, on, on the next couple hundred meters. Well, they've only got 800 That's meters to go or less, isn't it, now? And uh, it's Alex G who's pushing up the hill. Vincent Luis, bit of a bit of a sorry uh, sight there for uh, the, the, the winner in uh, Munich. But uh, we'll find out. There will be a race debrief after this. But he'll be finishing because he'll want to pull back the points for, for his team, of yeah, course. Yeah, for the Scorpions, it's definitely tough here. I mean, we don't know what the news is of Georgia Taylor-Brown from the last from the women's event, whether she's been disqualified or not. But that'll be a big blow to the Scorpions. Look at Alex Yi now, he really means business. Well, he, he might run out of road, but at the moment he's literally seconds behind him. We know he has a super finish from his running on the track, and what he's doing is he's taking Johnny Brownlee with him. Yeah, I think he's definitely on the gas. So they've closed that gap a tiny bit, and it's going to be interesting to see. We're going to come through to, hopefully we, we're delighted with a sprint finish here. Let's see if they can catch him. Alex Yi could win this. Regardless of whether he does or not, he could also overtake Vincent Lewis in the championship standings. Both of those men behind him could do the same thing if he doesn't indeed stay in eighth. But right now it's a foot race between the man from New Zealand, Hayden Wild, the Falcon, ahead of Alex Yi, the fastest runner out there, with Johnny Brownlee sitting in behind. 300 metres to go. I feel like I'm calling a horse race right now. 300 metres to go, and it's Hayden Wild ahead of Alex G and Johnny Brownlee. What racing jersey delivers again. I'm standing up out of the seat. He's getting closer, Alex G. He's getting closer, Johnny Brownlee. Now he's gritting the teeth, Hayden Wild. No short shoots, remember that. No one can take the shortcut in this one. And Yi has closed the gap to Wild. The Jersey crowd are willing them on. He looks behind Wild. Here we go. This is what Super League racing is all about. They're going to come onto the black carpet. And it's three men. Johnny Brownlee has been denied. He goes now on the outside. Brownlee in the orange. He hits the front. Wild can't go with him. Yi as well running behind Brownlee. Could this be Johnny's day? Could it finally be Johnny Brownlee's day? He makes the turn and it's a straight sprint for the finish. Johnny Brownlee and Alex G, the two Brits. Who's going to do it? It's going to be Alex G. Wow. What racing. Alex G takes it from Johnny Brownlee. Brownlee, though, will take the championship standings lead. Wild picks up the rest of the podium. I've nearly had a heart attack. I love Super League, and that is what it can deliver. Alex Yee, Brit 1 2. What a race. Look at the pain on Hayden Wild's face. And there is Vincent Lewis. What a race that was. That is right up there with the best Super League has ever delivered. Seth Ryder across the line. What a race from him as well. Had to come back a few times. But the last 50 metres, and Alex Yi just had a little bit more in the tank. He said he made some mistakes last week. He was learning. He loved being able to race week on week in this kind of format to continue to learn. And this is the week he got it right. Kenji Nina finished with a top five. Congratulations to him. But there was nothing between them at the back end. And Johnny Brownlee so close. Martin Van Riel comes back with a top five finish as well.
And we're going to head down now to Kate, who has our winner by a nose, Alex Yee. Yeah, Alex is just getting rehydrated a little bit, and I think he's earned it. Alex, what a finish. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Oh, honestly, that first round, I was really on the back foot, and I didn't. I was. I thought I was going to struggle throughout the whole race to kind of just stay in the mix at all. So, kind of actually swimming quite well in that last round. I was, yeah, really pleased to still be in it. And for me, like the transitions and stuff were clean, and that made the difference today. So, I'm, yeah, really chuffed. You talk about it being difficult earlier on in the race. What, what specific bits were you? Did you feel like you were struggling? Uh, just, just the first, uh, like bike leg. I was just really struggling and didn't feel quite there or thereabouts in the in the, the race itself. Um, Aaron uh, was the wheel in front of me and he, he came down and maybe that shook me a little bit, kind of. So I kind of started taking a bit a few of the corners a bit slower and then kind of felt my way into it. But yeah, I'm a bit in shock to be honest because I didn't think I was going to get a result like that today. So. Yeah. The sprint finish is exactly what people want to see when they come to Super League Triathlon. You did absolutely amazingly, Alex. Congratulations. See you in Malibu. Thank you very much. Cheers. And shout out to Johnny as well. He made it a really exciting race. So, yeah. Cheers, mate. Well, there you go. One of the best there ever has been in Johnny Brownlee in terms of Brit racing and the guy who's going to take it into the future, Alex Yee, crossing the line. But as they... As the race unfolded, Matty Hauser handed over the short shoot defence on Lewis. Seth Ryder came down in a bit of a tangle with uh, Hayden Wild. Vasco Velasa picked up the other one. And then Vincent Lewis started impressing himself on the front of this race. And it was a race in three between Johnny Brownlee, Hayden Wild, and Vincent Lewis. We lost Lewis. We gained a couple of rhinos. And it was Hayden Wild who led out early on. But in the end, it was Alex Yee who did the job. You can see how much it means to him. And Johnny Brownlee gave absolutely everything. He'll be extremely happy with that as well. Hayden Wild couldn't hold on in the end. But what a race that was. One of the greats. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. And I can also update you right now on Georgia Taylor Brown. She has been awarded second place at Jersey 2021 following an appeal from the technical committee. There she is right now. She was disqualified for incorrectly taking the short shoot. However, she made up the distance before the end of the final run and it didn't interfere with the other athletes. So therefore the technical committee, well, they'll meet again this week to ensure the rules are further clarified for future races but she sits in second spot in that race. She continues uh, on her championship run and it'll all come down to those two women, Liam Month and Taylor Brown in Malibu. And there they are chatting with Non Stanford, but great news for Georgia Taylor Brown fans. Great news for British fans. One, two in the women's, one, two in the men's. We're going to head down to another Brit right now, Annie Emerson. I saw it. Hayden Wilde, uh, you've left me sp speechless. You were so brave. With 200 metres to go, you were in the lead. We thought you were going to win it. What happened? Alex, she just too good today. Yeah, I was, um, I, I was feeling good today. Uh, I decided to take Vasco's um, idea of wearing no goggles on the last lap. It was fantastic. We're sharks, so we can pretty much see like any time. So I didn't even know why I used these, to be honest. Um, but yeah, like they, they were too strong out there today. I had, to, I had to make a move on the run. Had a good transition and it just went from the gun. Um, but yeah, got beaten by two bit athletes today. Um, my goal was I saw Vince off the back, so that second runner just wanted to really put some um, some uh, aggression in there. We got away from him. He lost a few points. Uh, Johnny gained a couple on me. Let's get, let's get ready for Malibu. Congratulations, Hayden. Well, back on the podium again at Super League. It's good to be back. Right, Johnny Brownlee, second place. Johnny. You're one of my athletes and you're British. You look like you had that, but it was another Brit that got it. I mean, Alex, she just too quick on those last 50 metres. Yeah, well, I thought I had it at the corner because I knew it wasn't that far from the, the turn around to here. So, and I saw his, uh, his orange shoes coming alongside me and I thought, oh no. And he, yeah, he beat me, you know, he, uh, he had a better kick than me, but I really enjoyed that. It's nice to go battle. In fairness, that looked like a tough race. 
but you sort of picked it up as the rounds went round. Yeah, I was a bit sloppy today in parts, but uh, I did pick it up, and I knew it was going to get harder and harder. I knew that the first one, there's a lot of athletes who can give it a good go then, and then it would get harder and harder. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Congratulations, Johnny Brownlee, second on the podium again at Super League. Thank you very much. Well, there you go, and as the championship stands, Johnny Brownlee has one point on Hayden Wilde, who has one point on Alex Yee. Vincent Lewis has it all to do now, ahead of Vasco Velasa, Martin Van Riel, Kenji Nita had a great race. He gets to 21, as does Seth Ryder. Shachar Sagiv drops back, as does Jake Burtwistle, and that is the way it stands, heading to Malibu. We cross the Atlantic and arrive in California in just one week's time and there we will decide our championship standings. It is bye for now from Jersey.